The party is set to continue as Forrest battered Leicester shitty last night. No, not last night, last evening. Last afternoon? Yesterday afternoon is the Today. word I'm looking for. It was a word. It's been a long day. Welcome to Grumpy Old Reds. Or is it Happy Old Reds? Good morning, good evening, or good night, wherever in the world you are, or whatever time of day you're watching this. Hope you are having a fantastic weekend. And welcome to your weekly edition of Grumpy slash Happy Old Reds, where we got a lot to talk about. Because we've got to talk about the game, we've got to talk about transfers, we've got to talk about boring mouth. We've got so much to cover off today, and so little time. Guys in the chat, hope you are well. Oh, God, Simon's gone. No, he's back. Hi, Simon. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Let's say hi to the guys in the chat. We yeah. want you guys involved in tonight. Good to see you, Mark. David, good to have you in. David's got a question for the Grumpy Old Reds. He's been saving it pretty much for like a year to ask us. Uh, Hendo apparently out for a month. I've heard that too. Chris will cover Hendo and the goalkeeping situation as well. Uh, who else we got in here? Marky Markison, good to see you. Um, talking, uh, totally agree, Chris. Taking the wife to Nottingham for the Leeds match, staying the night, can't get a ticket, but enjoy the atmosphere in a pub. It's all about being in and around Nottingham. Shark a block, good to see you. Whore bath, everyone wants the whore bath, man. <laughs> everyone wants the whore. we'll get into it all. He's depressed if Hendo's out, says Ant. Well, we got your fellow Ant who maybe will underpress you. Good to see you as well, Chris. All right. Should we start with Hendo? Because it seems to be the hot topic of debate. Should we start? Guys in the chat, do you want us to start with Hendo? Good to see you, Turbo. Good to see you, Sara. Red Dog, good to see you as well. And you've had an amazing week. Shut up, Red Dog. Don't. Don't. Look at that smug look on his face. Don't forget to join the Predictor League because Ant thinks he's all that suddenly. Um. Who wants to start us off on, on Hendo? Uh, Sai, I want to start with you, actually, because you were down the end where it was happening. Yeah. And from what we saw on the screens, he just took the goal kick. He followed through quite heavy with his clearance and then went down and started screaming. I don't know if you mm. could quite see it from your angle at the ground, mate. Well, for me, I didn't actually see the incident because obviously I was, you know, I was looking at where well, he You're a great help, mate. I was following the trajectory of the ball, obviously looking at where the ball's gone. And then suddenly my dad was like, oh, Hendo's on the floor. I was like, wait, what? Looks, looks, looks over and he was on the floor. So we know from, you know, that sort of instant, if it, you know, complete, it wasn't a contact thing. It was definitely not. It was, um, those are the most, those are, mo you know, those are the worst, aren't they? Mm. He's definitely pulled something, hasn't he? And he, you could, you could tell with the physios, they were all signaling, you know, they were all doing the signaling for the yeah. substitution. Yeah. Obviously, we were, we were in the ground. We didn't actually know why he didn't come off. We were like, Hend uh, we were like, yeah. Hennessy can't be that bad that they can't change him. But then, obviously, <laughs> later on, I sort of realised that you know we we didn't have enough subs. But did yeah, you, it was really none of you at the ground really knew that, did you? Yeah, because no, as you didn't, didn't know, and you didn't know about it. No, didn't realise. No. Didn't realise. Because because you could see uh, you could see Hendo was proper struggling because. Uh, I can't remember who it was that passed the ball back to him, and he he literally couldn't kick it with his right foot. He had to like yeah. just sort of scuff it with his left foot out of play. Mm. Um, so yeah, that, I was saying to my yeah. dad like the day was going so well, we were so happy, and then that sort of just put a slight dampener on the whole whole day really mm. with Hendo, um, especially how late it was. But I mean, thankfully it was so late because as you said, we might have been in trouble if we had mm. sort of twenty minutes left. But I was surprised that Leicester didn't actually try and attack him. He was, Hendo was struggling so bad, I was surprised that Leicester didn't really, you know, go for it and really try and put him under pressure because they were just, you know, looked like they were... Yeah, they just didn't cares, bother, did they? Yeah. No, they didn't bother. Before, before we jump in, how do you spell Horbath's actual real name? Because I've always called him Horbath. H-O-R-B-V-A. One of you, one of you, one of you. I thought we were doing it in sync. Almost was. Say again. H-O-R-B-V-A. V A T H, V A T H. All right, because I tried to write Horbath in the uh, poll, but it wouldn't let me. <laughs> Surprisingly <laughs> enough. All right, guys in the chat, because a few of you are asking, uh, saying it. Would you recall Horbath in there? Va. And would you the, recall the, Horbath? V V V V V. It's too late. It's up. That's it. 
But they, yeah, I got it right, but I'm still going to call him Horvath. Uh, YouTube can't okay. stop me from calling him that. No, I can't stop you if you want to. <laughs> Would you recall him back? What, Edwin? Yeah, I'm just calling call him Edwin. that. You call him what you like. Uh, if we could, if if we could then, yeah. Yeah, if we could, I would do, yeah. You got that little faith in, in Hennessy after you called him, and I quote again, just to remind all the viewers, the second best, the best second choice goalkeeper in the Premier League, and you wouldn't worry if Henderson was injured, hence the topic tonight. Uh, I did. Hennessy could did. come in and do an absolutely fine job. I did, I did say that. I'm not did I get the I'm quotation? Not, I'm not, I'm not one of these did I miss a little bit out, or was that quite spot on? <laughs> Yeah, I think I was wrong on that one. No, having to be, seen, to be li fair, having uh, seen a little it. more of him, having seen a little more of him, I'm not as confident in not that shout as I was. To be, to be fair to you, and I think he looked good until he got the red card in the World Cup. Yeah, I mean, even yeah. in the World Cup, he yeah. looked good until until yeah, that moment. Did. So, did. <laughs> it seems like since then, it's just you know downhill from there. Yeah. I want, I do wonder yeah. if he sort of lost motivation, as you said, he's sort of twilight of his career. You know, the, maybe the World Cup was what was motivating him to put the performances in because he was he was competing with Ward for that first choice goalkeeping slot for for Wales. So maybe he was you know stepping it up before that. But you can tell now. I can just sense with him now. He just can't be. I don't think he's up for it. I don't think he's up for this fight. As you said, he's he's ready to retire. He's not up for his relegation. That's scrap, that's, is he? that's spot on, Sai. That is spot on. It's like a motivation mm. thing. Now that you just yeah. said that out loud. Yeah, I kind of my brain's. There is a there is a chance that if if uh, Endo's out for you know six weeks or something, there is a chance that if he started playing in the Premier League, he might actually get that spot back. You know what I mean? Once he starts playing, his professionalism, you know, yeah. might kick in again. Maybe, but, maybe, so he's, maybe his motivation is not there because he is a number two. You know, and he mm. he didn't expect to get mm. a game. We can, but we'll, right, we'll jump right. to Ez, Ez. We'll get your thoughts in a sec. Let's just see what the chat is saying. Rad Dad, good to see you saying, American, come home. Um, Horbath is cup tied. <laughs> I've got to stop calling him now. It's cup tied, says David. Uh, yeah, but that won't matter for the Premier League. It yeah. can't be cup tied for the Premier League. That would only be the League Cup. Um, I think he's referring to the Man U game, isn't he? But We're not worried about that. that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're going to beat them anyway. That's it doesn't matter who's our in to Mark saying, evening to the panel. Have finally warmed up after freezing my nuts off waiting outside the ground for a stand. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> Not the first time I've heard that. Keith wants all of Bath. So does David. Uh, who else wants him? Bobby wants him. I'd just yeah, like to else? point out to Mark that it is entirely 100% Ezra's fault that I wasn't there. Ooh, wasn't it, Ezra? the blame. Yeah, yeah, I held my hands up because I was supposed to message him to remind him to meet us there. And I had to tell I me, to, I, I had no involved, idea. <laughs> I got too involved oh, watching the game. And I was, I I've just read this, games. right? I just read this from Sharky. Oh, god, my computer's crashed. Yeah, I, was, I saw it. <laughs> I can't quite do milk tray. I've got dairy milk, but I can't quite do milk. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Cut price, cut price milk tray, cut yeah, price yeah, milk, yeah, tray yeah, 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 milk tray, man. <laughs> I was like, I was like thinking, why is Sharky writing a milk tray? And then I looked at the Dino, bandit Dino there. <laughs> Dino started it off. You go back to the start, Dino started it off. Uh, that's quite funny. Oh, guys, just funny. a bit of sympathy, man. Throw, throw some as emojis up there for sympathy. <laughs> oh, he's going for the ego flex, man. <laughs> Give him the ego flex, guys. <laughs> he wants to see those emojis. Oh, God. All right, we got oh, some breaking, breaking, news. breaking transfer news. news. Um, Forrest are looking to sign uh, Nicolo Zan Zaniolo. Zaniolo. God. The Roma Nicolo striker. <laughs> Zaniolo. Zaniolo. Thank you. That's what I was going to say. I so, breaking transfer. Me. It's not actually breaking, but it looks cool. It's like Sky Sports. <laughs> yeah. it looks so, we'll talk about him as well in a minute. But, Ez, I want your thoughts on uh, whatever we were talking about because you were going to say, Yeah, right. Something. Okay. Let me go back to because uh, I've, I've not said anything yet. But when it, when the injury happened to uh, Hendo, mm. and my initial thoughts was that somebody from the uh, Leicester City fans had thrown something at him. The way he fell, because I didn't see the I didn't see the actual kick. Just looked round and saw him him fall in the way he did, and it looked like he'd been hit by something. The way he collapsed. So that was my Same, initial thought. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I, 
I looked over at the bench and saw no, saw no. Uh, I didn't see Hennessy warming up. Didn't realize we'd all, already done our free not uh, all our substitutions, but we'd had our free periods of substitutions that you can do. Um, so we couldn't have brought anybody on, but didn't realize that at the time. So, but my initial thought was actually he'd been hit by something because uh, Leicester fans aren't the smartest, are they? So uh, it wouldn't. I wouldn't have put it past him. We saw what happened to Ramsdale at the end of uh, North London derby today. So, you know, on a serious note, it's not far off that sort of sh crap happening in football because that line has not, that line has been crossed on too many occasions where now it's going to get to a point where something serious could happen. This this sort of stuff, if it does carry on, and, I, and I'm going off on a tangent now, but it really pisses me off that a footballer can't feel safe on the on the football field that's their place of work if somebody came into my place of work and attacked me you you know what's going to happen so why is it any different why are why are fans allowed to run onto the pitch and confront players <laughs> whether of opposition or not so i am going on a tangent about it that sort of shit needs to stop because if it doesn't stop they're going to go back to putting up barriers and all this sort of stuff and that's not so how you, we want football. So to you be. think we should go back to being barricaded like animals behind? No, behind that's what I mean. It will end up going back to that if they don't do something about it. How now. Do you stop it. You stop it. It's a lifetime ban from any sort of those you people. Do anyway, I don't, I don't, forget I don't, that. Forget let me that. go on my run. Let me go on my run, and then you can butt in in a second. Yeah, but even a play, going back to the playoff semi-finals, I was not happy with a single one of those fans running off on the pitch. I don't give a shit what their excuse was. They shouldn't have run on the pitch. That the pitch is a sacred turf for the players. They should feel safe on the pitch. What's it going to get to? We're going to start attacking officials because they didn't agree with with a decision. That sort of stuff really needs to be nipped in the bud. And the only way to do it without putting up the barricades is a lifetime ban from all sporting events if you you are caught on the field of play. Full stop. You get taken to court. But they get that as that's already the punishment. That's that's well, more reactive than a proactive. Well, it has to happen. So if every one of those, and I, and I know there's some of, of them amongst our, um, our you know, listeners, that ran on that pitch at Wem um, at the semi-final, if they were all banned from going to Wembley, would they, would they do that sort of shit again? They wouldn't. So it has to be something that, that would hurt those people. So that's my solution to it anyway. But I don't want the barricades coming up. But I also don't feel... Players should be attacked on the field of play, and I'm not. And again, going back, I'm not saying that's what Leicester did, but we saw that today with Ramsdale, and that sort of stuff is not far behind. You know, um, my rant is over, guys. You can jump in now. And you want to jump in on that because you wanted to. Yeah, yeah, I can do. Um, you can't stop it. End of. You can't stop it. If somebody wants to get on that pitch and kick a play, they will. But let's start overreact. How many cases in the last ten years? Out of all the thousands of professional football matches that have been played, has a player actually been injured by a fan? Uh, us last season. Who? What do you mean? The chef, our, what's his face? Yeah. The striker, Sheffield United. Yeah. 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 I'm talking about during the game. Afterwards, I agree with Ez, but that's down to stronger stewarding. During the game, I don't think that there's oh, anything you can do. And and also, it, it actually doesn't happen. It doesn't Johnny, tend to happen what? during the game, but it does happen after the game, and it yeah, has happened. Play, people running on the pitches. Be... People running on the pitch happens at every single ground, every single year on the last day of the season. Mm. Right? Every single ground. The only way you can stop that, as I say, is to have solid blocks of steward all the way around. That's for one game at the end of the season. Apart from mm. that, fans don't run on the pitch. I go down the city ground, fans don't go run on the pitch. So I don't. I think it's important okay. not to overreact. I mean, we've all got. A, we, I agree we've 100. percent Anybody that's caught doing it shouldn't just right. be banned. They should be put we've away. Clearly, right. We've okay. clearly all got really short memories. Mm -hmm. Go back a year. Forest Leicester FA Cup. Warrell mm -hmm. scores the third goal. What happened? Player ran. Uh, a fan ran on the pitch and attacked one of our players. Mm -hmm. So, so don't tell me it doesn't just... happen during the game, and don't tell me it doesn't it happen in this. Country. It that fucking does happen. It, 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 no, it does no, no, That's no. very rare, though, Ez. That's very rare, isn't no. it? It doesn't... Uh, talk about sledgehammer. Yeah, all, right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, what's your take happen? on it? Because you sit quite forward quite in the close, bridge yeah. end. Yeah, so, I'm right you know, pitch, yeah. away fans, yeah. if you like. Yeah, you, and you're right by the away fans. So, what's your take on it, especially, say, at the city ground? 
On what? P- play people running on the pitch, or yeah, it, like more stewarding. You think that will control it? That's all you can do. Uh, wait, are you talking about before the game, or are, are you talking about after the game? Is what Ant's talking about? During and after. Let's talk about both. I, I just I agree, Ant. Like it doesn't really happen, does it? I know Ed's pointed that one instant now, but that's the only time I've really seen it in football. To be honest. Well, for, for me, going today, to a game. But we saw it again. Today. No, that wasn't on the pitch. That was. Yeah. The guy okay, was leaning over the barrier. Game. Understand that was after the game, and it was at um, you know, it was it was at White Hart Lane, you know. Um, but he didn't he didn't come on the pitch. He was just leaning over the. No, I think he, he was leaning. Him in the head. Yeah. He, Did he come yeah, on the pitch? I didn't really see. It. I saw. Him. He, he no, jumped he onto on the, the hoardings. He got onto yeah, he the uh, advertising hoarding and kicked yeah, him yeah, from yeah. there. Um, All right, we're, we're kind of going off on a tangent. Yeah. 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 Well, let, let, let me just say one more thing. One more thing. Maybe they should. Maybe the players should stop running towards the fans. Then. Yeah, so, but I don't mind that, man. I, I, I love like it. it. I love I like it. it. But, if, but you, you know, can do Ezra's, Ezra's balls all round. <laughs> no, I don't want Brown the ball. That's what I've said. That's what I don't want. I don't know where it's gone, but I'm saying put the bars. Or I said don't he did the bars. to I defend said, him. He didn't say he so said hard. we don't want to get to that stage. No, I know, yeah. but that's the only so way hard, you can stop never, it. Ever think of doing that? Again. You name that's the only people. way you can stop it. Well, all right, so, no, all right. I guarantee we're going to go it. nowhere with this. And I don't agree with that same way. I don't agree with that. Hold on, Jimmy. You're in charge of the agendas, right? You're in charge of the agendas tonight, and Jimmy's saying we've got to move on. And yeah. my computer is going to crash at some point. Am I lagging on the screen? Because <laughs> I feel like I am. Yeah, no. So anyway. Let's talk about the game then, rather than. Let's uh, talk about the game and let's talk. And I want to uh, we'll talk about the goalkeeper. But as you had a different take on the first half to the likes of Ant and mm. uh, Sai. So I, I just yeah. wanted to take get your take on it because it's coming from a different yeah. angle. Um, yeah. In terms of the game, now obviously you're happy we won, that we smashed yeah, Leicester and all that. But let's talk about it from an objective point of view. How you saw the first game down from the Trent end? Yeah. So um, just to remind everybody about the lineup. So the the, the one change from the Wolves lineup was that uh, McKenna came in for Bolly. Other than that, it was the same starting lineup that started against Wolves. Um, so that that was. Um, a good thing to see. Seeing that consistency, I, I was happy with that. Uh, and I kind of expected McKenna would be the one. If mm. Bolly missed, missed out, he'd be he'd be the right person. I think we all eventually agreed, even though, even though you tried to throw a curveball in there, Wolverine, but we eventually agreed that that would be the um, sensible change to make. So, But from my point of view, the first half was, was poor. Poor from our point of view. Um, I didn't see really any positive spells of attacking, no no concentrated periods of possession the best the two the two big talking points from the first half for me uh, and they were both against us really was um harvey barnes's chance which he had all the time in the world to actually stop the ball and just tap it into the back of the net and i don't know why he rushed thank god he did but he rushed mm. and missed a very very guilt test chance which it's about uh, the first one or the second one the first one first, first half one, i was yeah, talking yeah. about yeah um, and uh, if we reflect on it properly, Serge Aurier was caught way out of position. It's probably the only thing I'd knock him for from yesterday. Um, he may have also been slightly at fault for his second half uh, chance, but I won't get on to that yet. And the other talking point from the first half was uh, Yates' injury. So, because mm. he didn't come back out for the second half. At the time, I didn't think it was as serious because he did carry on playing for the last few minutes. Certainly played through injury time of the first half, which was only a minute. Um, but he didn't come off and he didn't come off till half time. So from the first half, I was really disappointed from what I saw. It was what I discussed in our previous show about how we can't seem to string a 90-minute performance together yet. We're not quite there. So despite how bad the first half was, I thought we were lucky to get away with that chance missed. And I was more than confident that we, I would see a stronger second half. And I mean, well, the guys can go, go on and talk about that. Yeah, just I before we jar, I'll come to Sai on it, see if he agrees. I'm interested in the chat. Did anyone see the first half from the same perspective that Ed's <laughs> just explained there? Or is there anyone in the chat who saw it as a solid performance? I mean, Sai, how did you see it, the first half, from the other side of the pitch, really? Mm. Mate, it was so flat in this st- in the stadium. 
Like it was so flat. No, I don't think anyone could really be bothered. I, I say I'd not be bothered, but there was no, no there's nothing on the pitch mm. inspiring us to get get up for the game. It mm. felt so flat. Even the guy next to me was like, "It's too cold for this." Just as in, like, can't be bothered <laughs> to sing. Like we can't mm. even bother to sing. There's just nothing to sing yeah. about. No, you know where I am. Normally, lower bridge for us. You know, in full voice yeah, the whole stars. game. Yeah. It just yeah. felt flat. Like there was moments in the game where I couldn't even be bothered to to get to get singing just because there's nothing. It was just no. you know long long ball FC punt the ball up the pitch, and then Leicester will attack. We'll get the ball back and we just punt it back up the pitch again. It was mm-hmm. it was so flat. There was nothing. There was no like creativity. And for me, it seemed like Aurier and jo- uh, Brennan really struggled to link up together on, on that left hand side. But you see on the right hand side, the left to me because they're running yeah. towards me. But yeah. Um, like I see, I see Serge running up the pitch and then just stop. And for some reason, it looked like he didn't want to pass to Brennan. And then mm. he would just go backwards and then the ball would end up back at the back of the keeper. So my main thing was that first half was just flat. The main word was flat. There was nothing in it. But obviously, obviously I agree with Ez. Like I knew sort of second half, we would come out, come out again, come out of them. You know, the lights would, it'd be lights on again at the city ground, nights under the city ground, that sort of atmosphere. So luckily mm. it did play out in that way. But yeah, my big thing in the first half was it was so flat, mm. which surprised me to be honest, considering it was a derby game. Yeah, but I suppose I that's probably it. Cooper's. That's probably Cooper's tactic, just to keep it solid. You know, go go into half time and then second half have a big second half. But it's it's risky because as says said, they had very good chances, especially the one Barnes yeah. had um, shooting towards that? me. No, the yeah. second one was even worse. Like he had, yeah, he had the whole goal to aim at. He was I had a great view of it because I was just sat just behind where the ball yeah. the ball travelled, and I thought that was going in. Like I yeah. thought that was going in, but. All the Leicester fans thought it was going in as well. So, yeah. Thanks it was harder to miss than score, wasn't yeah, it? It exactly. was crazy. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. And I want to I want to bring it to you now about, I don't want to ask you the same question because we'd just be an echo chamber here. But the second half was obviously way, way better. Yeah. And from what you saw yesterday, what do you think changed in the second half? Did you think it was a half-time talk or do you think it was a substitution? Or do you just think... We just grew in belief towards the second half and realised how shit yeah. Leicester were. Well, I'm fairly pragmatic these days. You know, uh-huh. three, three, po- three points is what we need. And I don't really care yeah. how we get them. Having said that, obviously, you prefer to play well and get the three points because it means that your next game, you've got a better chance of getting the three points. I agree with the guys. The first half, I thought it was pretty even. I, 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 never, I never dwell too much on, oh, we had a great chance in that because... They're crap. They miss them. Don't you know that's how football works. You know, we had good chances. We, we've as well, had, to be fair. We had good chances. Yeah, we yeah, had, 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 well. so, we had yeah. good yeah. chances yeah. and missed yeah, yeah. them. You know what I mean? It, I mean, even in today's North London derby, Ramsdale was man of the match, and yet mm. Arsenal absolutely slapped Tottenham. Do you think they give a shit? So mm. I'm never too worried about that sort of thing. But yeah, the first half was flat. In my off-time report, I said, yeah, it's fairly even. Not a great deal happening. But I also said I'm quite confident in the second half we'll do what Forrest do in second half, kicking towards Trent end. And that's exactly what we did. So I think mm. it's a case of, you're probably right, probably the initial thing is to keep it tight, keep it solid, don't go a goal down, et cetera, et cetera. And then second half, we'll put the pressure on. That's what I feel it feels like. Um, as for the substitutions, I think the substitutions were fine. I wouldn't necessarily say they changed the game, although... Bizarrely, one of my favourite players who I thought had a good game, Scarpa, coming off and changing MGW into the middle, probably did change the game. I think he was mm. far better having Scarpa in the mid in in the middle. So, yeah, you know, that, that, that wasn't like I'm a con- he literally just contradicted himself in that sentence. But that's all right. Carry on. <laughs> Why don't you fuck off? What did I say that contradicted myself? He said, uh, "I don't think the substitution has changed the game, but the substitution of Scarpa changed the game." <laughs> no, yeah, what I said is, I don't think the substitutions. Why don't you listen? I said, I don't think the substitutions particularly get changed the games in themselves, not the personnel, but the the move of MGW into the middle. That's not that you could have done that without making a substitution. You could have swapped Scarper and MGW over. Don't you understand that? No, so that's not a substitution. That's that's a change in formation. No, or change I don't in think personnel, rather. No, I don't think it would have worked personally. I think MG Dub being in that Scarper didn't have his best game. We, as we love him, we absolutely love him. Whoa. But I think he was I all right, think, he was all right. 
it wasn't his best game. Right. I thought he it was wasn't right. his best game. Um, he didn't do anything. But MD Dub was given that role and he took the game by the scruff of that the net. That's my point. It wasn't a substitution of personnel. It was a movement of personnel from one place to another. So you're telling me, okay, if Scarper had taken the position that... Uh, All right, wait, sorry, you two are literally <laughs> arguing over agreeing about MG Dub being in the middle was game-changing. Whichever way you want to look at it, you're you agreeing on the same yourself, thing. And I don't like that. When people don't listen, accuse me of contradicting myself. I don't like that. You just did. Uh, you, I'll play it back to you. You did contradict. You do that. <laughs> All right, anyway. All right, and carry on. So MG Dub went into the middle, contradiction or not. Um, crowd uh, chat, you decide if he did. Yeah, you feel that movement there made the difference in there. Yeah, I do feel that. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. If you think Ant was contradicting himself, put an S emoji. And if you think <laughs> he wasn't, put an Ant emoji in the chat, guys. I, I anyway, carry on. Oh, we're me. watching since you were listening. <laughs> <laughs> so, go on, once he moved in there, did you feel it was more balanced? I just think that MGW played the role better in this particular game. Mm. I prefer Scarpa coming in off the right. That's, his, mm. to me, his natural position. Okay. You can't put him there. You mm. can't put him there, though, can you now? With Brennan playing the way he is. Yeah. No. What, what, one, thing I'll say on the first, one thing I'll say on the first half, it looked very obvious that we were, lift, we were lacking a striker. There were so many times where we got down the wings and there was just no one in the box to, to cross mm. the ball to. Yeah, I mean, we had Yates trying to cross, trying to head the ball into the goal. It's, that's never going to. Well, it's not. I've been saying this lo- like for a long time now. We keep getting Yates into goal scoring op- like goal scoring positions, but he can't finish. It's a really weird one. Like cause Yates had two really good chances in the yeah in the first half. I just I don't know why we have him in those sort of positions. Really, that header. So, sorry, do you still think he should be <clears throat> the hold? The he holder. should be further back. Not, I don't know if you hold her, but I want to see obviously Freuler, you know, playing in that position, taking shots. And I know Freuler's not been great at taking shots, but no, yeah, I mean, I, I literally only remember him taking like two shots for Forrest Freuler. And I see Yates yeah. taking two or three shots every single game, and he's never going to score. Like, he, he wasted his only goal on that Blackpool game. So, so where would you play him, Sai? Si? No, I guess it doesn't matter because he's probably out for a little bit. Yeah, now, he's out but... now, isn't he? But yeah, let's well, pretend he's rather, not out. Yeah. Where would you I'll rather see him? As as I'll the guys in that. the chat, James is saying very true. So fifty p head. Dino's agreeing with you. Mm-hmm. Um, Simon's saying proper grumpy old man. They are. I'm trying to control them, but well, I've put them as far apart on the screen as possible, and I am lagging so hard. But anyway, sorry. So where would you like to see him then on the pitch? Um. Well, he's. Uh... He's going to be out of the team now, as you said. We know. It's, luckily, we've got Danilo in to cover. But I would play, yeah, Yates further back. But I know the, I know your argument where you're saying his passing range is not as good. His passing, you know, mm. he lacks that sort of passing that Freuler has. So, yeah, I don't know. I suppose it's not something that we have to worry about now because I yeah. assume Danilo will just come straight into into the team. He'll sit in that CDM position and then Freuler will be pushed further up. So I suppose we'll see how that works and then yeah we'll see how yates, yeah. we'll see how that system works and then when if yates comes back we'll see where to fit, fit him in yeah um so in terms of the movement into the middle just staying with you a sec side because you said about the striker thing although i thought sturridge wasn't massively fantastic when he came on what's his, what's when he started his name to... oh, no, I sorry heard it. sturridge well, sorry yeah. sorry <laughs> i've had a long day um the shape was better i thought so I agree yeah, that MG Dub yeah. going into the middle w- worked, but having a nine, I think, was more important than MG Dub going in yeah. the middle for me. I don't know what you guys think. So you start it off, and then we'll bounce around to them. Yeah, I mean, for me, I agree with you. Like when Sorge came on, it, it looked a lot, lot more balanced. Um, as as you said on your video previously, it's not. It wasn't him. It was just somebody being in that position because mm. he he for me is still not good enough. I mean, we saw that from that header he missed. That's a that's a very good chance. You've got to take those mm. type of chances in the Premier League, and you know, add that to that's now another chance added to the long list of sort of clear cut chances he's mm. missed missed for us this season, including that penalty. So, yeah. for somebody that's supposed to be such a good clinical striker, I'm not I'm not seeing it to be honest. Yeah, 
I'm still hearing people persisting with that, you know. Yeah, and I know. I'm even going back to the Newcastle game. He had a cracking chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. And nil, nil. Yeah, exactly. Well, well you know, some of the chat are saying, uh, let's just bring it up. Jimmy's saying um, Surridge started the move for both goals. I'm not sure. Uh, about David's that. saying Surridge can't score. Uh, you know, I don't know. Get, yeah. Rest of the chat, get your kind of thoughts in the chat. We'll bring them up. Surridge is playing too deep in midfield for the first goal. Says Matt, he was doing quite a bit of that, but I agree with uh, his link up play yesterday was actually good. He kept them occupied. It, we we started launching the ball up a little bit longer when he was on, and he was causing them trouble. He there's a mm. couple of times, well, because I was right behind him, he's he's watching the man rather than the ball, you know, because they, yeah. they, they, they weren't very good in the year, they're, they're back two, three, mm. or whatever you want to call it. They weren't very good in the year, so he could have won more headers than he actually did, but he made himself. Uh, a nuisance there, which um, allowed us to get further up the pitch at a time where we were That's sitting back a little bit. Um, I, I think he did well, but I'll go back to what Simon said about that chance he missed. That was another guilt as chance. There was a similar chance that I saw um, Obama Young miss against us in the same uh, same part of the pitch. And um, yeah, against Chelsea, think... and Chelsea played, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, a guilt as chance, good. which if, if if obviously if it was nil nil could have changed the game luckily we got away with it but uh, yeah but the finishing i can't keep i can't understand why people are still persisting with that he's the best finisher at our club prove it mate you, he's probably had at least a dozen decent chances in the premier league this season and he hasn't scored a goal you know not so. even in the premier league and i remember against spurs he should have scored as well at least at least yeah. one yeah. or two he had and obviously yeah. against that pool he should have got three or four Mate, the only goals he scored this season are two against Grimsby. <laughs> that's mm. it. And people wanted oh, yeah, to you know, start in the yeah, Premier League. Right. He scored two goal, good goals against Grimsby. That's it. Yeah, I Dennis. mean, it, you know, there's yeah. loads of people that could do that role. You know, if he's not putting the chances away, that's that's a, that's his role as a striker. He's got to be putting chances away. If if he's not doing that, you might as well get a, like a Keenan Davis or something. Because if you're saying he's just going to play in the team to hold up the ball, there's there's probably players out there better holding up the ball. I think I think storage. the point of it is is that I think everyone would be in agreement that Awoni start. Well, we'll do a poll on that in a second. Um, Awoni would start, but I still think you know Ant's point from yet from the other day and yesterday. Would you buy him yeah, if he wasn't at Forest? I kind of think that kind of sums up everything on it for me. And you were quite nicely in line with that cross from Aurier going towards Surridge, weren't you? And from your angle, did it look like it was nailed on? I was already up in the air. You know when you know a goal's going to go in? Yeah. I was already yeah. up in the air and I just couldn't believe it. Uh, it was awful miss. Dreadful miss. The cross was sumptuous and he, he yeah, just needs to get his head on it. He didn't need to put power on it, yeah. direct it or anything. Just get your head on it and it's in. Listen, I'm not going to talk about Sam Sorridge for long because I've said my piece on Sam Sorridge. Yeah, he ain't good about enough. He's not good. I mean, enough. the guys, the he's guys, a Premier like, League strike. player, and we would not go and buy him if he was available for transfer. The mm. guy said, the guy in the chat just said, you know, strikers are bad patches, but he's not been prolific all his career, his whole career. It's not like he's been banging in goals in the championship. He's yeah. he's he's got less than probably twenty goals in the championship. Yeah, you can't, that, you can't say that's yeah, a clinical yeah. striker. That spell he had for us at the end of uh, uh, last season was probably his. Biggest purple patch in this whole. Yeah, purple patch. Yeah, it doesn't mean you're yeah. um, a purple patch. And 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 I don't doubt he could do that for a championship team now. But at the Premier League level, we need goals. We need a goal scorer. Similar crosses came in the other side from Lodi as well in that second half, and there was two really good occasions from uh, free kicks wide on the left where the, the ball in was fantastic. And there was nobody here. And a striker, a proper number nine, should be there. I, f I can't, can't remember how many times I said it, but our, most of our cross again the corners yesterday. I'm not, I'm not happy with it. I'm seeing too many of these trying to go to the front post for a flick on, and how many of those achieve it? You guys saw it. Our, our corners mm. yesterday were atrocious again. Well, Get why was the scarper on corners? Get scarper on them. Exactly. Mm. Listen, MGW's decided he's taken, or the manager or whoever, he's taken every corner and every mm. free kick. And he's got to come off them because we've got Scarpa now who's better. Yeah, I agree. Mm. I think we all agree. 
How did you guys in the chat feel about the free kicks and corners? Um, let us know. David saying MGW set pieces were trash. Uh, Dina saying he's the only guy getting in the six yard box. I don't think he's Premier League, but he's getting into those positions for poachers. He's talking about Surridge there. Um, and also, there's like I think nearly 200 of you in here. We've got 49 likes. Guys, please take a moment. Cheer up. Can miserable please. gets do hit that like button and subscribe of course if you are new here um Can I but yeah a, it's a, a, one last quick last... remark about sam i love the guy by the way for what he did for his last season i always will do but you know you're good enough or you're not and there were times mm. yesterday, yesterday was it only yesterday god that seems long ago, mm. that. um <laughs> there were times yesterday when he did the right thing, which to me is further proof we need a target man. He did the right mm. thing in that he got up and he got in front of the defender and the ball came on his chest. Brilliant. But then it bounced off his knee and go to the opposition. Yeah. Right, but it uh, happened. Not good enough. So it shows that, I think, I mean, we've all said we, we want a proper striker, but it shows that that position is needed to be filled, but not by Sam Storage. Yeah. 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 Okay, I want to move this on because um, we've got a few questions in the q and I want to bring the crowd on on this one. Um, Martin saying, why don't we offer to buy Sancho on the cheap? I'm going to turn my computer off because my computer is going to crash while I'm rendering. Sorry, I'm going to turn my camera off for a second. Simon, I believe he's talking about um, Manu Sancho. Would you J be interested? Uh, Jaden. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, what, what price are we talking about? Because Manu paid, what, 72 million for him? Yeah. A couple yeah. of years yeah. ago. Yeah. I wouldn't even pay half that right now. <laughs> Do you rate him, Sai? Do you rate him as a player? Um, I've not really seen much of him, to be honest. Not in England. Anyway. Seen, oh, no, not in England, yeah. I've seen, yeah. I've seen clips like, of him in Dortmund. But, I mean, it depends what you're talking about. If you're selling him for, what, 20 million? I would take, you know, if there's, a, if there's a chance of taking him on loan, which there isn't because we've got Hendo, I would definitely do that. But his weight, I don't know, Martin, I don't know if you know, his wages are 350,000 yeah, pounds a week. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And I'm not paying that. <laughs> oh, my <laughs> you stupid. Oh, my <laughs> not only did they pay 70 million for him, plus add-ons, but it wasn't a final target, plus add-ons. I'm not sure he's going to meet his add-ons, but 350 grand a week. Just for to me, send him off two years ago, He's gone. I mean, he's, gone he's out of the country, isn't he? Didn't we? The thing is, what is happens he, when oh, he's, he's gone? Leader? Sorry, his attitude's go on. not right, is he? Is it? He doesn't something's... look like he's a grafter. No, there's something I mean, not that... right. He's not. He... Have they sent him away now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, he's, he's in special but... school, hasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, to, for his health. mental and physical health. Well, there's not much else, yeah. is there, really? No. In other words, <laughs> too much, too much money, money obviously has affected some of these youngsters at my new massively yeah there's not just one or two of the youngsters who've um fallen by the wayside there's a few there's several of them much uh probably marcus rashford's the only one who can probably hold his hold his yeah, that's a good one. point there by nffc 1865 just bring that back mm. up lee he did play for cooper in the england on um setup so i yeah. think that's why uh martin's asking that question is he a kind of yeah. person that Cooper could fix yeah, I, I don't doubt that. I absolutely believe that if he played under Cooper, he would be playing better. But why do we want another winger? And why would he want to drop his wages? Because no one's, we're not going to pay him 350 yeah. grand a week. This is a problem. You know, they get overpaid and then it's hard to move them on because unless their contract yeah. runs out, um, nobody's going to be picking up that contract. Nobody yeah. in world football. Nobody. You know, so it's okay. not just a. And I, and I tell you what, I bet he's on about a seven-year contract as well. Keith's absolutely right, you know. Um, yeah, he's absolutely right. Yeah, he, he, yeah probably is. Yeah, so that's one problem. part of his health that is yeah. fine, yeah. Yeah. It's bang, bang, okay, it's on. Let, let's move on to the next question, which is um, from David. He says, would you take a free agent goalie um, on a play-as-you-play contract for the cover, like Karios, oh God, who has Prem experience? Would you guys be interested in that? I've I've got it. I've got to turn this camera off. Still, Sorry, I, go no, sure, surely it depends on. on which goalkeeper it is. Yeah, which <laughs> goalkeeper? Not Carrier. Yeah, 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 that's <laughs> quite important. Okay. I wouldn't want. Well, Karras was one, one off. But I, I think we'll all say no on that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll we'll we'll take no Darlo on. back. For me, Darlo yeah. looks like the obvious choice. There was a time where he was Newcastle's number one, wasn't there for a while? 
time and he was our number what, one. What? Yeah. <laughs> no, but yeah, but he's you know he's got prem experience. He's played in Premier League, I, yeah. maybe not for a couple of years, but yeah, at one at one point it looked like he was Newcastle's number one. So yeah, I would take him as number two. We're I reckon he'll be right open now. for the move as well. I reckon he'll be up for that. Okay, next questions from Adam. Keep these questions coming in. We want this to be nice and interactive with the chat tonight. Um, Adam says, uh, how old are you all? I think Wolverine's 28. Adam, you're seven years out. Uh, Forrest Dan is 42. Adam, yeah, I'll, I'll set um, that. Hold on. Ez is 32. And Simon is 24. Well... I think Simon's got the rough end of all that. I think John the happiest. <laughs> what did he say? Am was forty-two. Twenty-four. He said no. For Simon, no. He said Simon. No, Where are you getting twenty-four from, man? You're hearing what you want to no, hear again. Simon. I thought Simon, you said yeah. Simon yeah. was twenty-four. Yeah. That's why Simon got the rough end of a stick. Everybody else. No, nah, he's not far off, mate. He's he's not far off. No, I mean, I know we got 10 years cut off hours at least. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you were seven years too old with me. You're about 40 years too young with Ant. Um, Ez, you're Ten pretty years. close to Ez at 32. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. I'll take that. I'll take Simon, that. you're a couple off on cyber. So, yeah, it's the facial hair. It's the facial hair. It's a few years. Yeah. I okay. thought you said 24 for Simon. <laughs> you did he did for the 100th time. But, yeah. eh? He did. Oh, Simon's all right with that, aren't you, Si? Never. We were talking about you. He he complimented the rest of us by giving us at least ten oh years. Oh my God! Are we you, seriously? You, God, forget, are you going to even argue about <laughs> someone suggesting your age? I, I give up. I'm done. Stream over, Dave. We kill the stream. Front front today, aren't we? <laughs> Next <laughs> question, yeah, Dave. Dave, kill the stream. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Big <laughs> up to <laughs> expressions, man. I saw his pain today. It's quite funny. All oh, right, let me. I'm very own Lemmy. I'm very own Lemmy. Saying, are the girls interested in Dan Juma? And would you take uh, Livakovic, the Croatian keeper, if we could get him? Um, he's put two questions in one. Start with yeah. Dan Juma. Uh, and Dan Juma, yes or no? And that wasn't for Ant. No, no, Ant asked that second question. And, oh my. <laughs> and is that is that question breaking news from Lemmy as well? Is that why we've got the colors news? Well, we are. Look, um, I'll, do, I'll have an update video on it tomorrow. Um, David, you're, you're very funny. I saw your comment. Uh, Dan Juma is still on the cards for Forrest. It's still it's still not set that Boring Mouth are going to get him. So that today, could happen. I read, sorry, I saw today that it was in London today. Mm. Dan Juma. Yeah. I, I don't well, know how true it is. Mainland, but I don't know it was in London today. So when did yeah, just do that? Yeah, Forrest, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I know, yeah. <laughs> and to be fair, I mean, there's so much turmoil that like, boring with at the moment. Yeah, you don't want to go there, do you? you wouldn't want I mean, to same, go, same yeah. with Everton. You, you, if you was a player now, you stay right away from, from Everton. I saw oh, pictures yeah. of like Mina in the streets, like, you know, talking to fans or calming oh, them yeah. down. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's a crazy situation. He's a big guy, isn't he? He's a big guy. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. over those fans, yeah. aren't he? Exactly. Nah, I, even heard, I even heard that after the Mudrick deal went wrong, that Arsenal are interested in Dan Juma now. So, well, they'll be worried if they like, hear we're in it. In as well, yeah. Uh, they just guys, want to guys get in the chat. Them. Sorry, just one second, guys. Guys in the chat, yeah. you've got um, FFTV's very own high press in the chat with you. Hi, Dino. Hope you are hey, well. Dino. So you can direct any of your transfer questions as well to Dino in the chat. He will reply to you. But what you really should do is follow. Um, the High Press account on Twitter, which is at FFTV High Press. And that has all the breaking news as well. So I know you guys quite enjoy the daily transfer videos, but if you need some, you know, fix of transfer news in, in between all that, the High Press is like live with the updates. So make sure you go follow that on Twitter. So just yes, no, then, Ez, Dan Juma, yes or no for him? Yeah, I would. Uh, Sai. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And yeah, I would. Yep. Yeah. You've changed. Can I change. add You've something to change. it? I yeah, no, I've changed my mind because I've seen a bit of him now. I, I can't yeah. pass a comment on a player I've not <laughs> no, seen. No, I know. That's fair enough. You know. <laughs> uh, but can I add something to it? I'd get him in if we were getting rid of Dennis. There's no point in keeping them both. I'd get rid of Dennis. 
fair point. Would you, play, point. would you play him on the wing then? I mean, I know he is a natural yeah. winger, but you wouldn't play him down the yeah. middle then. Yeah, I'd play him on the left, cutting in. Mm. Just That's a quick shout out to Jadison. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'm loving these questions. They're just moving the conversation at the pace that chat wants to do. So as long as you guys can keep I am... chucking the questions in. Can I ask Lemmy's we'll question? He asked me pace. about the Croatian goalkeeper. Yeah, go, yeah, go on. It, it was an Esther. I've not heard of him. I've not heard yeah, of I don't him. know who he is. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> you don't know I who see. he is? No, I've not heard of him, either, to be honest. I'm not... Are they talking about the Croatian guy? goalkeeper in the World Cup? Is he, yeah, is, yeah. Is, is he the main goalkeeper? Uh, yeah, he's remember. not He's not coming to Forest, mate. He's not coming to Forest. Livakovic. Livakovic. Yeah, it's big, big clubs linked to him now. Big clubs linked Where to him. Where is he at the moment, um, do you know? Um, is it... Um, Zagreb? Croatia. Zagreb. Zagreb. I think... Yeah. To be fair, I think Danilo think... was linked to big clubs. I yeah, think we, I true. think we could have got him. I think we could have got him in the summer for about five. In the summer, yeah, that's right. Yeah, but now it's you know, okay. like Chelsea yeah. stuff also, like that, teams like that. And also, you got to realise that we have a number one goalkeeper. He may be a little bit injured at the moment, but we do have a number one goalkeeper. So we're not going to get a goalkeeper of that obvious quality from what yeah, you're saying exactly. coming to be number yeah, two, yeah. are we? Yeah. Is there a chance? Uh, before you yeah. jump in, as we're on 79 likes, we need 21 more of you to hit the like button so we get to 100. I'm loving these questions and I'm loving, I want today's stream to be about us guys with you guys. So keep these questions coming in. Uh, Omai is going to bring them up on the screen. We're going to run through them as well. And then go ahead, as jump in, mate. Um, so are we giving up on bringing Horvath back in? And is there a possibility if um, Dino's injury is that bad that he that he could get sent sent back to Man U because that usually Ooh. happens if you know with serious injuries they usually go back to a parent club obviously from what I'm going, hearing it's a hammy it's either a hammy or a quad Mo mm. most reports are saying a hammy and a hammy scares the crap out of me because that's what Nia Kate had so that does worry me oh I'm wrong you went back to Man U to me. I don't know if you, I don't know if you got I mean me and Ant were facing that end I feel it looked like a quad injury to me. The way yeah, that's it. what he was holding. Yeah, I mean, injuries back like. you know, it looked like quad injury mm. to me. But um, it's really it'll be interesting what the diagnosis is. But again, are we going to get secret squirrel? Who knows? Definitely. We'll know if we see some transfer activity. We'll know the extent yeah. of the injury. Yeah, the, the point on that one is, is Cooper said his usual line of, we need to wait for the scan. And yeah. that really it's sent chips down my spine true. because that's what they said about Nia Kate. Yeah. So yeah, David's saying it's a muscle injury. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce Bruce is coming not coming back. Coming He's back. not coming back. No mate. chance. Just, just, no chance. I don't know why Forest fans live in the past all the time. It's bring Spence back, bring Samba back, bring. Because otherwise, we can't keep whoever else back. back. If we didn't live in the past, mate, <laughs> you're, you're, you're sitting have... next to Ant, mate, and you're going to talk about the past when uh, I remember 1937 when yeah, we had be, this yeah. guy who passed the ball. Right. <laughs> All right, let's move on to the next question, which is from uh, we'll go to Poe the Panda. Uh, anything on that denial is I think he means the, I can't say the, 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 name, the Roma guy. Any good source uh, for that rumor, and would you take it? So, there is strong links to him. Um, he's look, I don't think he's world class, but he's I think more... he's of the level that we can get if that makes sense. Am I yeah, convinced I, by him? No. I, I, I'll put of, it up to the panel. Go on, Ez. He's more of a centre forward than a striker or a whole... He's, he's weird. He's in that... It's almost like a Varolva... What's his name who plays for France? Um, we were raving about him at the World Cup. Griezmann. 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 Griezmann, yeah. He's almost like a Griezmann-type player. Um, not sure if that's what we need, but he's strong, holds up the ball well, and he's got a lot of pace. Uh I think he's better than what we've got at the moment. So You've been on not... FIFA again. Yeah, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Where else do I get my stats from? That's you know. what I was going to say. I was going to say, I don't know to don't play FIFA. As <laughs> he's 80 rated on FIFA, if I remember right. I know. It's not too bad, mate. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's where I get my stats from, guys. You know. I put it, here, it sounded quite knowledgeable and, and yeah, come out of that. That's what that's what made me think when he said he's got this pace and this stuff. I thought, I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> As what's his week for? How many stars has he got for week for? 
He's got a free on his weak foot, so that's not too yeah, bad. Really. So. <laughs> Four star skill, three star weak foot. That's not a bad balance. Yeah. Um, and or uh, sorry, have you seen him outside of as his computer world? Do you, I'm, not, do you I'm, not, I'm not even seen. Have you seen him IRL? How many times do I feet, tell you? Though. Don't watch farmers leagues. Jaden yeah. Sancho, they are. There's a perfect example buying from a farmers mm. league. I don't yeah. think uh, Dino's saying he's right foot. I'm pretty sure he's left footed. He's I'm pretty he's sure left. he's left footed. That's yeah, scarce, as we all know. He's left. On P3, he's left. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I reckon all right, the teams in the Premier League sign off FIFA, mate. Uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna get serious. Um, I will give you guys an update on the transfer video tomorrow on him, um, and I won't be basing stuff on FIFA. Um, okay, next question comes from Mark. Uh, what does the th panel think about uh, of wait? What does the panel? Pa <laughs> what does the panel think about going for Dybala? He's not going for it. Yeah, but no. Another name. He'd be on massive wages. No, Dybala. He's talking about Pablo Dybala. Yeah, yeah he's on massive Dybala. wages. Yeah. He'll be on big wages, won't he? Yeah, he will be. Yeah, on huge wages as well. It's a bit. It's a bit of a. Toxic... He looks. He doesn't look like a fighter type of character. Yeah, it's a bit of a toxic for a character as well, from what I understand. Uh, yeah, he's, he's had a few injuries as well. As a footballer, yeah, as a footballer, get him on the day. He's fantastic, and even I've heard of him. Without watching, but he's just gone to Roma in the summer. They did that massive reveal for yeah, him, didn't yeah. they? Mm. Yeah, uh, I don't know if he's getting in the team or not, but um, yeah, oh god, here we go. Let me's coming in as long as we sign Siri, our team of the season version of him. <laughs> we better not get the gold rare. I think he's a gold common off memory. <laughs> I, mean, I don't even think he's the rare. <laughs> I still like what Martin said here, which is yeah, I was thinking that, yeah, but again, he's he... not gonna come. I don't think, I think well, he's I right. think, I think there's a shot. Like, there's very he'll rather go links. to Villa, surely. He'll, go, he'll rather go I mean, to Villa. He seems to be linked with Roma players, so why can't he be one of them? Uh, <laughs> I like him. I really like him. I think he meets all the criteria that we're looking for in the ball. I love him. Yeah, but he's so not great on FIFA, Reds. He's not great on FIFA. Yeah, I know. That's, that's the one thing. That's <laughs> tell one you thing. what. I just have to put him on the programme on manager mode. And, uh, I I tell you what, Chelsea, Chelsea could do with him right now, couldn't they? Well, Chelsea yeah. is signing everyone left, right, and centre. Yeah, moment, so I, know. Don't talk about that. I like that. It takes the heat off Forest, doesn't it? If Chelsea are signing, you know, all these players, it takes the heat off Forest. People can stop going on about Forest signing all these players. I quite like that heat, though. I quite yeah. like us. In nah. the I don't know why. I just like it. It gets boring after a while, to be honest. I guess so. I a bit like it. us. Um, all right, let's move on to um, Acid Burnout. Um, Alistair, we've talked about Sam Surridge and selling him. So, sorry, I'm just going to skip that question because we've covered it. Um, he says, where do you actually think we will finish in the table? Oh, I like this question. I like this question because we can get the rest of the chat in there. Form table, last six, we're ninth. It's good to see you've been following us on Twitter. And last 10, we're 10th. Um, let's start with Ant on this one. Where are Forrest going to finish? And uh, right, chat. Okay. Type in your position in the chat. Uh, a lot of it will depend on injuries and who we bring in. That's the first point. Sitting on the fence, okay. No, 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 no. That's not sitting on the fence. That's presenting a cogent argument, right? Or reasoning. Presenting your fence, okay. Um, because it does depend on injuries and, and who we get coming in. You know, that's not a, something I just made up. But I'll, I'll stick my neck out. I'll, I'm actually going to lift us up a little bit to my previous estimation. Obviously, fourth is, you know, bang on. But, you know, people will laugh at that. So, I'll, I'll, I'll do one that they, they agree with. And I'm going to say 15th. 15th? Hey, look, at look at that. Bang. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, so you're going higher or lower than 15th. I'm seeing some in the chat. Let's just shout out some of the chat ones. Mick the Red saying 12. Uh, Martin's happy at mid-table. Lemmy saying 15th, Adam's saying 12th to 15th, James is saying 9th top half. I'm loving Mark, he's saying 6th, I have money on it, let's hope you can cash in some <laughs> good coins on that. Chaka block sticking to the preseason of 14th, 17th by Gordon, uh, shout like 3 or 4 more out, Trev saying 14th, 15th from Turbo, Pose saying 9th, wow there's a lot of variation here. Uh, all right, what, what I'll do as we go to Sai, 
I'm going to put a poll on. I'm going to group it first to four, four to 10, 11 to 17. No, that's too big. I'll figure it out. Sorry, where do we finish? I mean, all these people saying, you know, my, my preseason prediction was this. That means nothing, doesn't it? That's just a lucky guess at this stage. Well, what the was your preseason co- prediction? The season played out complete. You know, not not really what anyone expected. Well, what, did, what was um, your preseason one? Just out of interest, I think like fifteenth, maybe. Oh, but shit. I would, I wouldn't get carried away with the you know the results. You know, last few games because we could easily then go on a bad run of games. You know, we've seen Bournemouth; they were up right up the table, and then they could drop off. You know, as 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 Anne said, the injuries is starting to rack up. To be honest. Um, we've got tough games coming up. So, yeah, I'll be happy with 17. I'm, I saw somebody in the in the chat saying I'll be happy with mid-table, mate. I'll be happy with, you know, 17 on goal difference. Um, but right now, I'll probably say 15th, you know, finish 15th. I'll be happy so with just that. So, just to clarify, you said that oh, really? pre-season predictions mean nothing. They don't, You yeah. predicted Did pre-season you... 15th and you're no, predicting that's now just, 15th. Yeah, that's just now me. You know, they're, but they're, they're, not, they're not related. They're just two separate predictions because... Yeah, the same. Did you no, expect, the season, did you expect the season to turn out how it has? Jesus been? Christ. No, you're on the right show anyway. You're on the right show, Simon, but you're a grumpy young do, red. Do, do, do you know what yeah. I mean, though? Wolverine, do you know what I mean, though? Like, that's just a complete guess at the start of the season. Mate, you're talking to the guy who said fourth, right? So you can yeah. chuck it wherever you want to me, right? <laughs> and I'll, I'll come to my prediction in a minute, but you're saying 15th, even though you already said 15th, yeah, just so the viewers are clear. Yeah, but they're two completely independent predictions. Yeah, oh, independent of each other. Oh, God. Yeah, it's your coincidence, one. isn't yeah. it, Sai? It's your coincidence that they're the same. Yeah, exactly. You know what? It's because if we finish 15th, he's going to be like, well, I said pre-season 15th. I said on the 15th of January 15th, and I was right yeah. today. Like, I like, you, like, you, like you wouldn't. <laughs> All right, but Wolverine, as, Wolverine, did, you, Wolverine did you expect it to be this stressful? Like, be honest, did you expect no. this many roller coasters? This well, many, yeah, this yeah I stress, did. I did, but I expected our stress like, levels... I expect our stress levels to be, you know, checking how Man City and Arsenal were performing, you know, <laughs> not, not looking at boring mouth, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this Actually, season, I feel like we've gone into war this season, you know, before before it, the season, all, all excited. Now we're just so w- weary of it and just, you know, so battle fatigued with, you know, the amount of, you know, hanging on by one nil and, you know, try to scrape a win here, scrape a win there, checking other people's results, you know, making sure we're above that relegation zone. I mean, we're doing really well at the moment. We've got some, you know, light in the end of the tunnel. But yeah, there's been there's been some like dark moments. I think this season, especially what you know, I was at that Leicester game. It's a very dark, dark moment. I think, but mm. yeah, it's looking good, isn't it? But as I said, you can't get carried away because we could easily then go on a tough run and then you know be it'll be like how it was again with people calling Cooper out and all this all this stuff. So you know, you know something. Yeah. You said wait, can I just make this point? Wait, let me just make one point. Something you said, right? site like, after the World Cup, it was so right. That World yeah, Cup exactly. was almost a break for the fans as well. Yeah. yeah? yeah it's yeah. the first time we could sit down and watch some football. And I never thought about it till you said it. Where you didn't really okay, it was nice if you know whoever you were back in was winning. But when it was your team was out and you just watched the matches, I haven't done that for a while. It's quite mm. nice. And now we're back in the trenches, aren't we? It's quite We're uh, back stressful. in the trenches. Yeah, I, I used to have black yeah. hair, mate, you know, at the start of the season. But <laughs> Gun, sorry, Anne, I interrupted you. No, I was just going to say very briefly, to be fair, the season is actually probably panning out how a lot of us said it would do before the season started. Because we all said that it was going to be difficult to gel this team and it probably wouldn't look like a proper team until January. And that's mm. pretty much how it's gone, really. It's, you know, it's not I unexpected, that, is it? Yeah. I, well, I didn't say that, but yeah. A lot did. A lot did. All right, Ez, I'm interested in your predictions. And uh, just before we go to yours, let's have a look at the poll. Quick update on the poll. 2% of you, your legends, saying top six. Well played to you two. Keep the faith. Don't change your minds. 29% are saying 7 to 12th in the league. 67, or well, now 68% are saying 13th to 17th. And there's 2% of this stream are Derby fans because they're saying relegation. Mm. 
Who's got the balls to stick their hand up and say they voted relegation? We will think no less of you. I'm just interested to know. So if you've got the balls, put it in the chat. I'd love to hear from you. Ez, where do we finish? Can I just say I'm not going to tell mine until we get a few more likes. So I think we've got 182 <laughs> in at the moment. And how many likes have we got, Wolverine? I can We're see 92. About... All right, we need eight more likes for Ez's yeah. prediction. So yeah, go quickly. Um, well, we're just going to sit inside. I'll mumble. mumble. I mumble for a while, but no, actually, I'm going to go back to <laughs> contradict what Simon said. I am going with my preseason prediction, and it was this pre prediction I made after the fixtures came out, and I went with 12, um, realistically, and I'm still sticking with that because I looked at the fixtures at the time, and especially leading up to the World Cup, and I put us on about having about 15 points by, by the time we got to the break. I think we got to 13, didn't we? So we weren't far off. But the games I expected to win weren't the games that we won. And the games that uh, we lost, came, <coughs> like, for example, the Bournemouth game, none of us predicted that, especially when we were 2-0 up at half-time. Mm. Um, again, the, also, the, the, as Simon touched on, the embarrassment at the Foxes' ground, you know, that 4-0 defeat, that, you know, we weren't see, we didn't see that coming either. So there were a few upsets along the way that can make you think twice, but I'm seeing now a similar similar bonding that I saw last season when we got to this yeah. stage, when we got to mm -hmm. around January and we went on this run and that run changed our season and I don't know why we can't do the same again. The thing that will derail us is injuries. If we get key injuries and obviously losing Dina would be a key injury. But <laughs> we'll touch on it later if we have time, but the Fast around near Carte's injury just seems to have taken another turn for the worse. I don't know how true it is, but we've heard some July. Yeah, we've heard, heard July being mentioned today. I don't know how true Breaking it is. Breaking news. Know. Watch the screen go yellow in a second. Yeah, near Carte may be out till July. That's just yeah. wiped up the smiles of everyone's face over the Leicester result. It's not verified, so don't don't start clicking. That's no, from the, is that from the FPO the... up? Huh? Yeah, is well, that from the we, FPO yeah. up? Yeah, we think so. So um, we haven't uh, verified. Yeah, we haven't been able to verify it, which is why um, Dino won't won't be tweeting it out until we get some verification on it. But we're just talking rumors. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised actually at this rate if we we don't see him again this season. It's just been shocking how little information we've been given on that injury. This, this is what um, I mean, is like the season's not exactly panned out as everyone thought. You know, as you said, no. you even said it. Like we beat teams we didn't expect to be. We lost the teams we didn't expect to lose. No one mm. would have thought Fulham would be sick right now in the Premier League. No, no one would have thought you know, Everton, Everton and West Ham and Southampton would be in the relegation spots. It's, it, I think this season's been completely unexpected. It's been, it's been great, weird. but it's been, yeah, it's been weird, hasn't it? It's, it's been, been so many teams. Big, look, 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 look at where Chelsea and Liverpool are. They're like ninth and 10th. Exactly. Mm. It's, exactly. It's and, a men's season. How many games have Man City lost this season? They, yeah, they didn't yeah, lose yeah. Games the yeah, last exactly. two seasons put together. It's been yeah. really weird. And I joked about it at the start of the season when I saw Man U had a shocking start, didn't they? Like mm. when they lost to, um, what was it, to Brentford? Brighton, Brentford. Brentford, yeah. Brentford. Yeah. And we were saying, is it just because Forrest are back in the Premier League? All these big teams are. are flopping their lines at the moment, but it's, it's, it's a weird season anyway. And to see Arsenal at the top That's of the great league. Point. Pretty much unchallenged um, is is proof of that, to be honest. Because when's the last time Ch uh, Arsenal have been uh, challenging for the title? It's been a it's been a decade or so. So it's it's a lot of change going on in this league this year. Let's just hope we can stay in it. I, I just firmly believe that yes, we have yeah. had a really tricky start, and it's taken a long time for the players to settle and gel. But I am seeing real signs of improvement. And I'm, I hope we can keep at least this five-point gap between us and the relegations. All right, all right, and all right. You've done your job. you got us over 100 likes. Thank you, crowd. Yo. Now we can shut him up, right? Can we just get your damn prediction? I told you, 12. I'm sticking with it. All right, fine. My and you wanted to jump in? Yeah, Bobby Vegas. Hiya, Bobby. He's come out with a, an interesting statement in the comments. Yeah, I actually, Ooh. sorry, Bobby, but I actually disagree with that. I think it will be low this year. I Run think it will be low. High. What do you think it will be? Oh, new question. I like this question. That was what do we think? Is Andrew, thank you so much for subscribing, matey. What, what do you, do you think it will be? Hmm? And what, what do you, you think say? it will be? I think it could be 34, 35. I yeah. think it's that low. low. 
Yeah, yeah that's what I'm thinking. Wow. Mm. Do you agree, so? Well, we were just talking about how, what a weird season it is. I've, I've never known a season where, you know, there's so little separation, so, so little points separating the bottom bottom teams. You know, usually you have your Norwiches and your Watfords, you know, cut adrift on mm. on like 10 points, 15 points at this sort of stage of the season. Or, But yeah, it's, it's really tight, isn't it? I, I don't know what how to think about that because Norm... Uh, what are you basing that on, Ant, the 34? Well, you well, based it on everyone being crap. Yeah, some very, very <laughs> poor side this year. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And that, would it, yeah. higher. That, that would make it higher, wouldn't it? Because the teams would then have more chance of beating bigger teams that they wouldn't normally beat. No, I but think no, they'd be the gap would be bigger. Each other. Yeah, um, yeah, everybody would be beating each other. So, mm. um, I mean, what we're about just, halfway through now, aren't we? Well, one second, yeah, just on this one, yeah. just on this one with Dino, he said over the past 23 seasons, the 18th place team, the highest to go down, have averaged 35.6 as an mm. average. So this whole magic 40 marker thing, then, by those stats... That's been a long gone thing, that one. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, at least a decade since, I think it was... Uh, who was a team that had 42 points and still got relegated? I can't remember who it was. Like, it was West Palace Ham or something. Palace or something. Oh. Yeah. Palace or West Ham, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went to school with Andy Johnson. Did you? I remember him going. Yeah, I did. Um, let's just see what the chat is saying. Uh, chat, put your put your numbers in on what you think survival mark is. Gordon's saying 35. James is saying 34. Keith's saying 35. Bobby wants to go 50. I really hope that's not survival, but I get what you're saying. Uh, Red Dog saying 36. Turbo mm. saying so many teams down the bottom. I'm thinking 33 to 35 will be enough. Um, let's have a look here. Mark saying 36 to 38. Uh, it was West Ham that did that. It was yeah. West Ham, not Palace. Yeah, so. okay. uh, God, it's good to have Dino in. The fact checker. Love you, Dino. Always. 38 from Adam. 37, Dino thinks it's going to be. Now, What's interesting on that is that if if you think about it, right? Um, and again, shout out to Dino on this. The whole goal is to match your matches, if you see what I mean. So now we've played 19. If you're on 19 and you're going at a point a game, you end up on 38 if you're playing for survival. So at the moment, we're on 20. So technically, we're ahead of where we need to be. And you could mm. then start the argument of, well, how many wins do we need? You know, this this may make you guys feel a little better, because to get, let's just say it is forty, yeah. So you're going to need six and a half wins. Call it seven, gets you twenty one points, yeah. Mm. Now you could then break that down and say you could have five wins and six draws out mm. of the rest of the games. So we could just be five wins away from hitting that mark. If you see what I mean? Mm. Are there five mm. winnable matches in the next? 20 odd that we've got you know so. so when you start to think about it like that it gets yeah. interesting so and, and that's why i'm more optimistic than simon to be honest because looking at where we are now halfway we're halfway through our fixtures we we're, we're bang on 19 games um mm. i think there's only fulham we've played 20 rest are on 19 or 18 games played so far and to be on 20 points after 19 games is pretty much par for where we need to be i think we can push on from but i think the key thing is going to, like I've just touched on, is the injury issues and whether we, we're in the perfect time to do something about it. I'd rather get these injuries now yeah. than, than next month, you know. So let's see if they are as serious as we think we're fearing they are. Oh, hey, hey, hey. 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 Uh, um, uh, we deal with it, you know, and we, we'll I see some movement that. in the market. Hey, Opez, he's been taking fashion advice off you. <laughs> Clearly. Are you going yeah, with Ed after yeah, you, mate? You're both busy later. We're on a roll. Ed's gave me the time and the place. I just need to get my black hoodie and then I'm, I'm heading out of here. Yeah, all good. <laughs> Let's get some highs in the chat for Lemmy. How are you, buddy? Yeah, we're all good, mate. Thanks. I was just kind of sitting in the background. You kind of just posted it in the chat and I said, right, I'll just sit in the background. I'll wait until you guys are done and then we'll have a chat. But I guess I'm joining the Grumpy Old Red. So I thought you wanted to come on, mate. So I was just no, no, no. I'm part, of, a, no, I'm part of Simon's no, contingent now. I'm bringing the age group down. Oh, oh, oh yeah, Adam. Adam, guess um, Lenny's age. Guess, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Embarrass him. Go on, Adam. Do your thing. Oh, hot hair, hot hair all over the place. Uh, yeah. Lenny, what are you thinking then My about this on. point thing? Yeah, what do you think it will take 
to to keep us up or what as in what's the safety zone for you points wise it's the old adage like a point a game roughly mm. gets you around about safety you then have to try and pick up a couple more points from wins elsewhere like beating the teams that against you in the relegation fight at home i'm pretty sure that's roughly what you need to be looking for so i'd say at the moment we're well on track and then we do have a couple of favorable games such as uh obviously we've got everton and southampton at home mm. uh who we've got to play so that's feeling we all left know. out <laughs> so those are definitely games that we can be looking forward to where we, we, we should be looking to get the three points which is then going to bring the average up but I mean I'm pretty sure going into playing Bournemouth and Fulham at home we would have been saying the exact same thing about those games so I, we're on the right course at the moment but it could easily fall off off the rails very quickly like we've seen for some of the other clubs so who knows Sorry, I can't take I can't take us seriously. Guys in the chat, can I just say I love you guys? The fact that you sit here listening to us all week. I know, and, like, you, and you give us banter, that's brilliant. And obviously, uh, Stanny Forth, you're right. I can't pay the heating bill, mate. I've got my hot water bottle on my back and all sorts, mate. I ain't messing about. <laughs> seriously, <laughs> have you? <laughs> oh my god. It's my wife yeah. again. All right, let, let's. Uh, yeah, Forrest Dan's gone to get his SAS ballot club, but he's gonna come <laughs> full, isn't he? He's gonna whip out an AK 47 while he's, he's at it. He's gonna have those little black marks across his cheek. And oh everything. my god, he's gonna. <laughs> Oh, oh, it's geez, not as funny, Ant. It's not as funny because it took you half an hour to find him. Mate. I don't know why. Because I was looking, I've got one of these. It's a forest one with a forest crest on it, but I can't bloody find it. That's why. <laughs> Turn it around. It's probably crests on the back. Yeah. So, so you look a little left out there. So let's. Yeah, I looked a bit like you. Yeah, but he, he, he's put hair, hairspray in, mate. He ain't ruining that hair, mate. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's bring the next question to Sai. And it's from our buddy Nottingham Now and Then on Instagram. Go, if you've got Instagram, Nottingham Now and Then, go Legend. follow him. And he's got some cool photos of the city ground. He sent me one the other day. It's fantastic. Mm. Black and white. Only Ant remembers them. Question yeah, is, this is for all of you. What is your best match you have been to or most entertaining? It doesn't have to be European Cup or promotion. Oh, my God. We cannot ask Ant this question. The stream will never finish. Yeah, I'll start right. with... All right, I'll start with Ant. You know what? I've been to European Cup finals. I've been to League Cup finals. I've watched his win the League Championship. I've been to Super Cup. <laughs> Do you know what though? I mean, maybe maybe it's recency bias, but getting promotion last season at Wembley was mm. magical, and you know, yeah, I would go for that one. Although another good one was away at oh, Peterborough God. last game of the season when we got promoted. Stan Collymore, three two, two nil down, three two winners, promotion. That was magical. And, and who did we play two weeks ago? Uh, was, it <laughs> was it Birmingham City? <laughs> no. uh. Guys, the reason I say that, Ant can remember stuff from 600 years ago, yeah? But you ask him, you know, the score in the uh, in the Leicester game, and he was probably forgotten it by now. Um, okay. I think this is quite a good question, because we got, obviously, me, Sai, and Lemmy uh, in our 20s still, so we'll have different <laughs> answers to everyone else. But no. um, I'm interested to go to... Let's get a youthful answer. And let's go you, Lemmy. Lemmy, what's your most entertaining match? Well, I'm, I'm going to take the question verbatim, I'm afraid. And he didn't specify that it had to be a Forest match. Uh, because obviously I don't get to get to many Forest games. And because I am still in my 20s, obviously I've not been to many big games. Otherwise, it would be like a, a derby game where we play uh, Derby County at home. But overall, my, the best game that I've been to was I got lucky enough to get tickets to go to the Euros um, last year. I got to watch England play Germany and be sat pretty much right on the front row in the corner where both goals went in. So for me, that's the best game that I've been to and been able to watch live. I've not been fortunate enough to be able to watch um any forest games where we've been doing anything spectacular or glamorous. Um, I tried to get tickets to go and see them at Wembley, but I had a cat's chance in hell of doing that. So 
basically we don't like Lemmy going to matches because every match he's been to's been shit. So <laughs> the last game I went to was Bournemouth, and since then I've been. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, I'm loving favorite. your memories. Get them in. Now and now and then. What the hell have you started here? Um, let's just shout some of these out. Sorry, I've I got hat hair when I did his thing, so I've gone all clop now. And I bet you I've been um, to every single one of these. Callum saying three two against RB, the old flag incident with Tyson. Uh, who else we got? Bring some more up. Oh my, let's have a look. Baseball ground, 1989, 2-0 was in the sheep end with a forest tattoo on my hand. Had to keep my hands in my pocket the whole game. Yeah, I'm sure that's why your hands were in your pocket, mate. Yeah. Um, Jay says, Peterborough 3-2, Stan Cottingmore away. You're just copying Ant now. You're just copying Ant. You can't copy Ant. Adam saying, I think it was Huddersfield Town with my dad in 2013. I was only five and think we won, but loved the environment and fans. This stream is so much more fun when it's just like taking questions and dealing with a chat. Love doing this. Um, Chucklebox says, I haven't been to too many games for various reasons, but I went to Nathan Tyner, Tyson corner flag game, and mm -hmm. that was what the hell's that word? Raucous, raucous. raucous, all the way through. Thank you very much, Ant. Um, and Man City away says Nikki in the cup 3 0. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a good one, isn't yeah, that? When they well. didn't they just get Rubinho, yeah, well? yeah, yeah, they just got the money yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything, yeah, yeah, we talked yeah. to them, yeah, and also and WBA away. That was great. It was, yeah, um, but yeah, that was also going back to that Man City game. Was also um, when we just signed Billy as our manager, and he was sat in the uh, sat in the uh, stadium at the time, yeah. so we hadn't yeah. taken in charge. And Nathan Tyson ruined them that day. It was brilliant. Uh, Mark says I'm 57 and loving the last 12 months. I cried when we were promoted to the Premier League. Um, so you can't call it Premiership, mate. That's rugby these days, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but we yeah, all agree with you, mate. mate. Big Mart says when we yeah. put seven past that Wednesday. Was a brilliant game that was. That was a brilliant yeah, game. But... Bohinen, Bohinen, I can well score. Bohinen, yeah, yeah, my yeah, worst yeah. memory. My worst oh. memory. It was it was like my first birthday, so I remember it well. On my birthday oh. when Blackburn beat a 7-0, man. Was... Yeah, yeah, of course you were one. Yeah, I was at that game yeah, as well. I was one. But that 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 yeah, yeah. space that bar <laughs> game. That 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 um, they clapped us. They clapped game. Us. Yeah, they actually scored a goal. Yeah, they clapped us. They were clapping mm. the forest. The play was unbelievable. And I was, uh, mm. I've got stories, but I'll leave it. Yeah. <laughs> Spacebar says when Newcastle beat Barca 3 2, a Spria hat trick. Yeah, Why don't I good. remember that? I remember it. I he met Tino brilliant. Espria in uh, yeah, the I'm Metro really Centre in Newcastle. No, he Jerry met Shield, you. Yeah. Five, no, yeah. Yeah, um, what else we got? We got a few more. Look at look at all you old fuck. Apart from Adam, <laughs> me, I'm, I'm si, it. and Lemmy, where are the youngsters? Where are the youngsters in it? And uh, can we get it. some like? If you're hit the like if you haven't already. If you're enjoying going down memory lane, uh, Charity Shield with Red Terry's one there. Um, Rand Random's got a good one. Uh, and, uh, well, no, let's, just, let's look at marks. Oh. Bury away in the cup on a rainy midweek. Night back in the 70s. Oh, Mark, you're showing your age. We won 3 0. I paid two pound 50 on the gate, <laughs> and we sang IO -E IO. We are the Trent End boys for half an hour solid. Mark, with your <laughs> voice, I feel sorry for those around you, mate. <laughs> Random 7 3 versus Leeds. Bizarre game. Um, who did have an eye on the panel? I didn't even that day. McClary got four. You've not asked me yet. You haven't asked me either, but carry on. Go to Simon. All right, let's go to Cy. Let's get a more recent one with Cy because he's about my age. Yeah, obviously, like for me, it's more recent. Um, a, a lot of it was last year, actually. A lot of the you know entertaining games that well, memorable mm. games for me was last last season. Uh, Bristol City away, that was that was special. You know, the mm. two Taylor. goals at the end last season. Yeah, that that was special right in front of us as well. Um, but yeah, I've got to agree with Van. It's got to be Wembley, isn't it? It's got to be the Playoff final win. The game was absolute crap, but the end, you know, that yeah. that when the final whistle went, that was amazing. Just party, yeah. just basically party mode for like next, well, for the whole evening, really. Forest women did win 12 1. I saw it in 9 1, and it was amazing. Wow. It ended up mm. 12 1. It was Fantastic 9 1 at half time, so it went easy on them in the second half. It was like 7 or 8 or 9 at half time. Yeah, yeah record breaking win against Clyde. Today, so yeah, fantastic. Well done to um, them. My one, I'm gonna go on, uh, 
I don't think it's been mentioned yet. Um, the day we got promoted from League One. Yeah, I'm old enough to remember that, to be fair. And, uh, yeah, I just about... about. Shut up. Shut up, all three of you. <laughs> right. But, uh, but just for a late one, because we weren't still quite, weren't quite sure until the full we time. We didn't know what was happening, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the relief at full time was, because that was horrible. Those three years at League One, that was mm. horrible, horrible, horrible. That was the worst time in my football, Forest sporting um, time. So, yeah, I was, the relief uh, after that result was unbelievable I'll, I'll never forget that day um, what was so, what was your most scarred match the one that hurt you the ooh, most that i was at i can tell you the one that i wasn't at and same to you guys me. in the chat same to you guys in the chat what one really hurt you the one that uh, i wasn't at that uh scarred me well in fact there were two and i mentioned one of them the other day it was a game after we sold collymore to liverpool and he and we were 2 0 up at Anfield, and we ended up losing 5 2, and they destroyed us that day. And the other one was the, uh, the 8 8 1 to my new. Those two scarred me. <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still bearing the scars of those two games for me. Go on, guys. What about Give you, us... man? Me. What about you? Yeah. Yeovil. Yeovil. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Oh, God, yes. Oh, oh, God. I couldn't. It's like, you can't believe what's happening. You know. I, I remember towards the end, though, I went down for a pee or something, and I was only having a pee again. This is not happening. This is not happening. It can't be, mm. you know. Mm. But it was. Don't, I'm sorry to cry now. Move on. Yeah, my one, my one's the one I said. The one I said. I, that Lee. that playoff final, two thousand and yeah. what was it? Three. That one yeah. hurt so much, yeah. man. Yeah, right. I remember. Yeah, yeah. I remember scoring, turning. I had my brother with me. I mean, I, I, I had Twisted Fate as well with me in the match. I remember Ooh. turning, grabbing my brother and saying, we're actually going to fucking do that. I just remember hearing that ref's whistle, thinking, what's going on? And then that prick, do you remember him? Brown for Sheffield United. Yeah, Taking Michael the Brown. penalty. We were, yeah. we were in the coffee stand. And then, oh, man. And then the second leg, I, I was working back at Capital One. A little fun story for you. Couldn't get the yeah. day off. For the second leg, so I skived off sick. I don't know if my old boss is watching or not. <laughs> we ended up in the um, what's that one opposite the Newton thing at the uni? It's the screen bar or the yellow bar. And uh, I just remember we were all in there, and then they scored the fourth goal. Everyone walked, started walking out, and then someone started cheering. Everyone turns back round. It's 4-3, yeah. You literally, we took five paces back into there. And then they blew the final whistle and everyone just turned back out. And then for the like, two weeks, I just locked myself away. I couldn't deal with it, man. It was oh. so painful. Yeah, Let's course. not talk about depressing stuff. This is meant to you be know, happy. Right. happy right. To in my mind then. now, in my mind, I'm, I'm reliving that. Bloody second leg Yeovil game. It's just... yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, not on him now and then. You're a bastard. Why did you ask this question? <laughs> yeah. Let's, yeah. let's move on. Let's move on to some more. Fun. Oh, God. Here we go. Now we've got all the chat depressed as well, man. 8 1 Man U. Oh, we yeah. never talk about Man U. Yeovil, you keep saying Yeovil. <laughs> that that My 8 1. Right. I, left, I left when it was about 6 1. I've got to be honest. And by time. No, uh, no, it's Plastic. 4 1. Minute. It was 4 1 when I left. Plastic. Plastic. Oh, Plastic. Yeah, it, Plastic. You know what? By the time I got back to the car, it was 8 1. And yeah, but the the car, came I remember, on. I remember the, Solskjaer came on, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. I remember the commentator saying, Please, ref, for goodness sake, blow the final whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was one of those days where it got dark so quickly that it, yeah. the game was dark and the, the work. I don't know why it may, may have taken a little I don't bit want longer. To talk out of all the ones you want to talk about, you want to talk about Man U. Please it's, come it's on, man. Two 0 to Man U and Tank scored. Alan Rogers scored. And it got like yeah. two one. And you're thinking, oh, and then Solskjaer yeah. came on, and that was that. History. Anyway, move on. Move on. I I'm depressed now. I don't know what to talk about now. Chat, what do you not want to right. talk about yeah. now? I mean, seriously. Uh, well, actually, I've just noticed we got we got a Jedi in the backstage here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the Lord. it's the Sith Lord, mate. Like you know what's been depressing? You know, my, my yeah. worst moment is waiting uh, for really? 10 minutes in the back room with this stupid hat on. I'm sweating like <laughs> Talk about a hat here. I, mean, I can't my even say I'm, I'm, my computer is lagging so hard. Yeah, at least you don't get a hat here, mate. Wait till I take Good my you, you like it. 
Then all, right. Know. So what it's... all right, let, no, let's move the subject forward. Now that we got Dino on, Darth breaks it. You're in charge of the agenda now, Noddy. Darth. Now we've got Noddy on. I'm in there charge. I just want to tell you about my best moment. Peter broke uh, the right. way where we took three sides of the ground. Oh, we got promoted. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. that. Yeah. yeah. Two nil down. Two nil down as oh, well, yeah. That was a two shot. Down. Yeah, well, I remember Amazing after strike. about 10 minutes, we were two nil down. I remember trying to yeah. Hang on, this is not supposed to be happening. <laughs> Ken Charlery. Ken Charlery scored two goals against Ken Charlery. Okay, my mate oh, was in what, a would you, what would you do for Ken Charlery now? <laughs> my mate was in a <laughs> pink panther <laughs> suit. Oh, I'd do for Collymore right now. Okay, no. oh. All right, all right, all right. Let, let's, let's move on. Dino, any more yeah. on Danilo? What's the latest on Danilo, mate? He's coming. Darth He'll be announced in tomorrow. tomorrow agenda. He'll be announced tomorrow or Tuesday latest. Where's... Wait, is Lee in the back? Is Megaphone in the back? Have we lost Bo Mai? Uh, uh, lost Lemmy? He's, he's got Megaphone in the back. because my hat looks better on me than it does on Lemmy. Uh, so you've been Barry. I, know, you I don't know. Me. Apparently this dude's chilling there. No, he's gone. <laughs> he wasn't out. wearing anything. All right, sorry. Um, okay, let's get back. So we're thinking probably tomorrow or Tuesday it'll be announced here, do you know? Yep. Okay, well, that ended that discussion. Know. So there you no, go, I Darth. No, no, I don't listen. I've done a, uh, you, I've done a video on it. Him against Freuler as the CDM position. So, mm. yeah. yeah look so up. we'll be bringing that out maybe tomorrow, maybe Tuesday, where we're really looking at how Danilo fits in to the team, what position best suits him, how he compares against what we've already got. Dino's done a fantastic bit of work on that. So that's going to be coming out. As once I've done the vlog, so don't hold your breath. <laughs> once your rendering's finished, yeah, that's my rendering really finished. out by the end of the year. Oh yeah, it, it it will be at some point. Okay, so I want to talk about just in terms of the other transfer rumors coming on. Let's we'll catch a couple of questions here. Danny been on this plane since Thursday. <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. Yeah. He, he had to get a connecting flight. That was the problem with it all. So yeah. he's on his way. <laughs> It's one of those Red uh, Bull planes, you know, in the Red Bull competition where you've got to make a plane yeah, and it just flies a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So loop, loop. Well. yeah. Uh, mine is saying I saw the worst manager we ever had in a bar in town and threatened to fit to fill him to fill him in, give you a clue. Oh god, David Platt. We're not going even more depressing, so no, 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 no. I reckon I know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> My brother. Uh how do we slaughter man you easily? Easily because they're a plastic fan base. Any news on Hendo? Um, what we're hearing is he will be out. It's either a quad or it's a uh, what do you call it? A hamstring, from what we're hearing. Uh, Danilo got box to box energy, says Darth Brexit. I'm I, mean, I don't want to talk about it too much because we've got the video coming out on it. But um, does anyone want to talk about where they think they would prefer to see him? positionally would anyone see him prefer him to be box to box or would you prefer it as a cdm and you're pointing at dina dina do you want to take that one if if coops plays him as a cdm he won't stay there because he likes to get forward and when you see the video analysis you can see he's all over the pitch he's even in the six yeah. yard box Far more forward than Freud. I can't take myself seriously. I'm sorry. <laughs> far more forward. No, far more forward than Freud has been all season. Freud yeah. doesn't really venture off, uh, get you know past the halfway line, does he? So, mm. but yeah, I think he'll be a box to box, which is a bit worrying, really. If we're looking for a CDM that to stay there, I suppose Freud is the CDM, isn't he? So then, mm. does Danilo take the place of Mangala or Yates? That's an interesting one. Side, so, do you That's see Danilo come? Do you see him coming inside to take? Freuler's position to release Freuler, or do you think Freuler will carry on being the CDM and he's going to take one of the other two? I think uh, well, the stats, I think that um, Danilo's better going forward. He's got more dribbling prowess, maybe. he's got more stamina, he's faster, he's got an eye for goal, he'll take a shot from anywhere, he covers a lot of the pitch. So I, I, I think he's a better option to probably keep Freuler there. But I, I originally thought he was going to sign him as a true CDM. Just to break up play, but he's not going yeah, to. Yeah, I don't know much about him. I don't know enough about him in terms of what he does. If he is a CDM, obviously I would put him in where Freuler is, but if you're saying he's, mm. you know, he can do the box to box, then yeah, replace. I mean, he's naturally going to replace Yates anyway because Yates is going to be out, isn't he? Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I he plays CDM. 
He starts CDM, but he yeah, just yeah. wanders. Yeah, he floats mm. about, okay. But I'd rather him wander, yeah. like you were saying earlier, than Yates wandering. Does he play sort of Pogba type of role? Yeah, yeah, he's a Pogba. Sort of in, 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 in what I've seen from him, he's Pogba. Is the like just not exactly just to give the guys in the chat who haven't seen much of him. I'd liken him to give Pogba. Give him some freedom then. Yeah, else. give him some free, Give him some freedom yeah. then. He'll, he'll, uh, I just, think he'll naturally. I think he'll naturally replace Yates if he's if he's that sort of box to box. That's what Yates is doing at the moment. So mm, that could work yeah. out for us. Yeah, just on Callum's point, um, just bring that back up, am I? Uh, we're not saying about replacing Yates, but Yates is going to be potentially out injured. He's injured. So that's what we're talking mm. about, yeah. Yates is not the type of guy that would go off at half-time if he yeah, wasn't you know, actually that, injured. I read today that he was likely to be back, but I don't know. It's not a verified source, so I'm not going to you know, say for them. Mm. But... Yeah, it's it, it looks like... it's What's Sai saying? If Yates went off... You got to, mm. It's got to take a lot to get him off the pitch, you know. I agree. No, I agree. Yeah. yeah. Um. Just on Darth Brexit, he's uh, gone as before. We bring up Darth Brexit. No, I'm going to take uh, just uh, one point to throw into the mix. Our, and we've all seen, and we all we're all big fans of Mangala. But is anyone here concerned that he doesn't seem to be able to get through ninety minutes? Mm. Yeah, sixty minutes. Sixty minutes. minutes. He comes off. You know Seems straight away. Yeah. Isn't that a concern? Big time. No. Mm. Mm. Especially, mm -hmm. with the, especially with who's replacing him, which is Colback, isn't it? Most of the time. Yeah, I think that's probably the main concern. Yeah, Colback's done his job the last two games. I'm not going to mm. knock Colback. I don't care what anybody says. I, I think, I've watched him and he was brilliant both two, both games. As yeah, as I know. Got, let me jump on. in on that. Let me go on. go on. As long as you've got the cover on it on the bench, and I think you're all sorted. I think we saw something similar or shades of it last year with the up front options. We'd be starting. Um, Davis, yeah. Davis, yeah. Yeah. Davis. We'd be starting Davis yeah. up front, or yeah. um, we'd be starting uh, Sam Surridge up front, and they'd come off after seventy minutes. And then, as long as you've got yeah. the right replacement, it's almost better then because then you know you're getting a, an even better right. impact because you've already knackered out all the players around him on the opposing team. So as long as he's working his socks off for that sixty minutes, mm. and we then have the cover to bring someone on off the bench who's going to do a similar job, then. Yeah. It's not a real worry for me. It's just making sure you bring him off at the right time and you don't get punished yeah. for five minutes while he's out mm. on his out on his last legs. Yeah, yeah. Good point. And also, yeah. also, Mangala's not the most important player in that team at the moment. He's he's a bit of a weak link at the moment. So, if anyone had to go off at sixty minutes, I think at the moment Mangala, I'm fine with that at the moment. To be honest, I'm not worried about that. I, I know go it's on, a tangent. Uh, go on, Andy, sir. Andy and. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just wanted to say, um, somebody in the chat, turbocharged in the chat has brought up something that I mentioned mm. the other day that was a concern of mine, that is that Mangala's been giving the ball away a lot lately. You know, whether he'll win the ball brilliantly, he'll be beat two players mm. brilliantly, and then his pass will go astray. Or it, He's it'll a weird one, isn't he? He's a weird one, because yesterday I saw a couple of bits of absolute skill from him where he did pirouettes and he got past two or three players, and he's more than capable of doing that. But then, yeah. it, it, one step too far, What I don't know yeah. what it is. He's not quite got that balance right, but he has got the potential to be a real Absolutely. difference yeah. in that team, because he can win the ball as well as doing bits of skill. It's just getting him right. But he needs competition. He certainly needs yeah. competition. And while Kiate's out, maybe Danilo coming in would give him that competition. But I think both Yatesy, for me, both Yatesy and um, uh, uh, Mangala's positions are up for grabs. And I would think that it'd give us a bit more solidarity to be able to do the 4 2 3 1, which eventually I think he's going to go to. I think the last dozen or so games we'll see that employed more often. I just think we have to build up that little bit of a gap between us and the bottom three for him to have the courage to play that way. I don't know if you guys agree or not. As I disagree I on that. As okay. I disagree, I mean, I agree on that. you say. Yates's position is up for grabs. There's no way under Cooper that Yates's position is under grab. There's no way. He, well, even he, if that guy, if, he, if, he, if he's fit, he... he starts every game, Yates. I so agree you, on the 4 2 3 1, though. That's what he wants to make. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although so in a 4 2 3 1, do you see Yates in a 4 2 3 1, Simon? I don't think Cooper's going to switch to 4 3 2 1. What, 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 what signals have you got that he's going to switch to that? The four three three is working. It's, he's, he's, it has, Cooper it is has very conservative, isn't he? 
Cooper is concerned. So are we going to persist with playing um, a one year as a left winger when he comes back yeah. fully free? Or are we eventually, yeah. with three of the best um, attacking players behind him, we're not going to play at number nine? I think he will eventually go I, to I, I can't I see Cooper it, doing that. I don't that. think he'll play number nine this season, as. I think we need to move to a 4 2 3 1, but we have to fix yeah. our centre backs first, which aren't mm. Premier quality with all Agreed. the best in the world. Ollie's been amazing, don't get me wrong, yeah. but year after year after year, and he's not a young man anymore. You know, we haven't no. got that Premiership quality at centre back. So yeah. that's why I think he's been having that extra insurance in midfield. And then obviously, we've got a plethora of attacking players along that line and mm. looking at high press and all the news that I'm seeing. He wants to sign a lot more attacking players, but no mm. real striker has been linked. Mm. You know, We've not, got not Lewis O'Brien in, to You're bring right. to the equation as well. He's, mm. he's, yeah. he's moved a one year to the left. He brings Surrey John on the left generally. Yeah. It's all a bit odd. So I think he's stuck with his false nine for the rest of the season. Yeah. Um, but I think eventually he'll probably end up 4-2-3-1. Like you say, when we're a little bit more safe. Cut. I, mean, I can't just, see him doing it at the moment. I just can't see it. No, Yates, I'm not saying that. Yates is a great yeah, player for me. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think I don't think he's going to do it right now. I think he'll do it a little bit further towards the end of the season. But I think he will eventually go to it. But uh, just one more point. I think what I've seen, certainly once Surridge came on yesterday, it was more of a Gibbs-White playing behind um, uh, Johnson and Surridge. I didn't see... So it was more like a one and a two and Four, I think three, that, two, one. Yeah. yeah I think that works a little bit better um and that's why I saw felt like I saw yesterday because it gives a game Jim, Jimmy's just party. mentioned in the chat sorry Wolverine could I just mention Jimmy's just mentioned in the chat yeah. Four, four, two, three, one needs an exceptional two. I agree with that. Mm, yeah, yeah that's exactly. Cool. We don't have that. Um, Yates, for example. We do. I, I think we do. I <laughs> think. Well, you're just saying Froiler and with, Danilo. With, I know we're building up near Cartoon. We've not seen him a lot, really. No, yeah. no, no, no. I, 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 I agree with you on the defensive. Oh, believe me, I agree with you on the centre back issues. <sighs> Yes, but if you look at the two we have, Danilo has played all his career on the right hand side of the two. Uh, for mm. Palmeiras, they play in a 4 2 3 1. Freuler, his best performances are on that left hand side in Switzerland in a 4 2 3 1. Mm. So I think we've got the two. The two are ready made. Neither of them are full CDMs, but when you're playing the 4 2 3 1, you don't mm. necessarily need a full CDM. You need that kind of parallel running, you know, where one will go, one will drop, and they, they, um, complement each other. That's the word I'm looking for. And those two already do that really well. And then that opens us up to playing a number nine. You have just just imagine this team, man. Froiler, Danilo, um, Scarpa, MG Dub, Jono, Awoni. There's your front six for me. And that mm. just I'm worried about that. Yeah. That, that's you know, I know what you mean, but we're playing the wrong two that's in the get over before, wrong, won't though. we? Yeah. Sure, what do you two in a team that wasn't settled? And you only really well, play CDMs in the chat. like that when you've got attacking wing backs, which we're trying to have, aren't we? Yeah. The two in midfield well, scares me, to be honest. Well, you say that. You I'll mean? put it open to the chat. Get your votes in in the poll, guys. 53% mm. so far are wanting a 4 2 3 1. The second mm. most popular is the 4 3 3. I feel you lose the um, the cam when you play a 4 3 3. The 9% want a uh, diamond, a 4 1 2 1 2. And then 6% want the 4 3 2 1, the Christmas tree. Get your votes in. I'll leave that open for a little bit. But Wolverine, on, quick it, question it, for you. Yeah, quick on. question for you, Wolverine. Would you play Scarpa centre mid in the four three three? Play him in the midfield. Because no. I've seen some people suggest that, but you wouldn't do that. No, I just I think his best attributes are attack. He can defend. What he does really well. What I liked yesterday from him was when he was winning the ball high up the pitch, mm. turning yeah, the play yeah. over high up. Yeah. We haven't done much of that this season, mm. and that's what I really liked right. about him. So for me, you're losing it. He can do it, but I think you lose an element of his, mm. um, you know, his, what's the word, attributes if you bring him back too, too deep. Um, I just don't know where you play Scarpa at the moment, to be honest. I'd play him quick enough now, to I'd be a winger. On the left. I'd play him on the left, even though I think he's better on the right. But mm. Jono is playing well. Well, he played well second half yeah. yesterday. You, you've got to give Jono a little more run. Maybe I've got oh. a Jono soft spot. I don't know. But for me, I'd play Scarpa on the left, MG Dub in the middle, Jono on the right, and then Awoni up front. I'd even stick Saric until Awoni's back just to give a striker shape, you know, even though I don't rate him. 
I'd just mm. do that. Um, let me. What would you? The good do? thing. The good thing about sorry. The good, good thing about playing Scarf on the left is you. You can then get that link up between him and Lodi. Lodi, yeah. That's that. That's quite exciting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They've got a good connection between them two. Yeah. yeah. Let me. What, what's your preferred formation at the moment? If we get to a point late on in the season where we're definitely clear of relegation, or if when we're playing Man United in the second leg and we've just been blown out of the water and we've got to chase the game, mm. or we've blown them out of the water in the first leg. The Come on, court. mate. I'd love to see us try the 4-2-3-1. I think attacking-wise, that is exactly what we're looking for. But I do share the concerns defensively with mm. having two midfielders and you'd almost have to instruct both wing-backs that they can't push forward anymore. Mm. Because if they do and we get exposed on a counter-attack with two centre-backs and two centre-mids, we're knackered. We've got no chance. And that's that's that was our downfall pretty much in the mm. Bournemouth game in the Fulham game, we were winning and then the fullbacks were still pushing forward, going, going for the jugular and we'd just get counter-attacked easily because we'd just get outmanned in the midfield and then our defence isn't good enough to be able to stop any kind of a counter-attacking through ball. So attacking-wise, yes, 4-2-3-1 is absolutely the best way to go and we've got the right resources now to do that with the amount of attacking midfielders that we seem to be signing and the wingers that we've got available to us. If we can have a one year fit as that number nine focal point, I think we would be flying and we would be getting goals, but we would also be shipping goals the other way. And the way that we have been shipping goals, it seems as soon as one comes, you're almost expecting a second and a third within the next five minutes. Mm. So it's too risky for us at the moment, especially where we are. So if the 4 3 3 for us is working at the moment, I'd rather trial out player. Yeah, don't change it. Player in the midfield. And then if we have to chase the game, Go into a four-two-three-one, but at the moment, I'd stick with what we've got. Is yeah. anyone here not worried about the defensive side of it, like me, um, in the four-two-three-one? I don't. I I completely disagree because what happened at the start of the season was in a back three. Mm. It wasn't a four-two-three-one. That but was we our get, issue. But it was always getting exposed in the midfield. We were out yeah, the midfield. Really two two was getting that was yeah, 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 but you're talking about two. Go on, sorry, I'm not joke. because it's a fight. <laughs> It's a fight. It was five, don't two, wasn't it? The cam. Yeah. Where's. Yeah, but you're yeah. talking about having a cam in there, aren't you? Yeah. But you've also got yeah, two wide. The they don't just stay up the pitch. They have to come back. And yeah, what's your take on it? It's telling them to come back, is the thing. If well, they're then that's just a Nico three. Williams was not coming back. Mm, you'd have to true. tell Aurier, yes, you can yeah. go forward, but you can't go all yeah, the way. Yeah. 100% right. So the job of the right attacking midfielder to be playing the ball through to him to play that cross. And as soon as we lose the ball, you are part of that back four immediately. Yeah. yeah Aurea and, lost his marker, didn't he? he? He was supposed to be marking, you know, the open goal that they missed. Barnes, yeah, wasn't it? He was yesterday. Yeah. He lost his marker. You could see the central defenders yelling at him yeah. afterwards. He was so far behind. Mm. He was quite lazy. But, you know, going on from what Wolverine said, it was a five at the back when we were getting overrun in midfield. But now we've moved that one that was in defence up one to make that three in midfield and we're mm. definitely more solid. Mm. Because remember, we're taking shots from... We were letting goals in from like 25 yards, weren't we? Even Ashley, yeah. Ashley well, Young scored against... So, yeah. God's sake. Every goal from the edge of the box is an absolute screamer. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And... I'm but now we don't seem to be letting in those sort of shots. Yeah, and no, I don't have to. Even at Leicester. Really in the last couple of games, you know... I'm trying that. Blackpool's a bit of a different one because we had a second team, but... I'm no, not I'm talking about you go uh, He called us. He's not really eating all. All right, all right, all right. Time out, time out, time out. I want, I want to hear the non-Forest fan in this Palmeiras top. Well, what's yeah. your take on this? Oh, me? <laughs> um, right. Oh, in I our am. current... Look the drama queen. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> he knows me so well. <laughs> um, in the current predicament... I think we need three three players in midfield. Uh, you, you know, I'm never, I never go overboard about formations because I believe that football in the modern age is is so fluid anyway. Mm -hmm. But I would say that we need three at the moment. I would say we need three midfield because we need to win that midfield, uh, and with two, you always run in the risk of being overrun. So mm -hmm. I would say four, three, and then to be honest, I don't give a monkey's what happens up there because they they can be fluid, they can move about. So I'm not too worried about that, but I do believe personally that at the moment we need three in midfield so that we can win that midfield battle. Mm. 
So I guess I'm on my own here, but I've got 58% of the chat with me saying 4231. So screw all mm. you lot as a panelist. But why would shit. you change it? Why would you change it now? We're, we're because I want a number nine, well. man. I want a number nine. Yeah, I want I, a number nine. Too. I want a number, I want nine. A number nine. And I want us to get off the back foot. I want us to be able to put yes. a ninety minute performance. Why, together. why? Why does it have to be? Why does it have to be defensive? Why is we're only looking at field. attacking midfielders why at the minute? We're not looking at true strikers. Because that's look, and this I guess I want to move it on to this subject because I still feel the three we have in midfield are more defensively minded than going forward. Yeah, because I, I say out of the three we play, Froiler is the most attacking. Yeah. Um, forward-thinking player, but he's playing the deepest. And Yates and Mangala... Mangala, I'm sorry, Mangala is never... He scored, like, two goals in his career. He's it never going to score, gonna, yeah. He's not going to score. And watch him score on the weekend now, I said that, I hope. Yeah, but he's uh -huh. not renowned for goal scoring. Yates, you know, the meme, 50 pence, um, head and all that, yeah? So mm. I don't feel like, at the moment, the I feel the midfield is designed to... Shore us up, like we saw. Look, the Leicester game is the perfect example. Shore us up in the first half, and then when the team tires in the second half, that's when our pace will come in with John with MG Dub, etc. But I still feel at home. I mean, if we're being honest, the possession yesterday was low 40s, maybe 30s. I can't remember off the top mm. of my head now. Yeah, the passing wasn't uh, high in terms of the numbers of passes. Leicester had more passes. Mm. So if you have a number nine and you've got three attacking midfielders behind him, and then you can have your two sitting. I'll go back and say at the start of the season against Spurs, against West Ham, when we had O'Brien and Mangala as a two, they were controlling that midfield. We weren't getting overrun in that midfield, especially in the Spurs game, if I remember rightly. And the Everton won the first half before he got injured. So yeah. that's that's what I think. I get what James is saying. Wolverine was still a newly promoted uh, I agree scrap with that, yeah. in the league. I agree with that. But what I'm saying you, you is, want to I, see you want to see beautiful football or attacking football from foot, foot, football. I'm not bothered about that to be honest. I just want to get the results. If what, what we did yesterday season, works, the if what we did this, season. Season, this season, if we, if what we did yesterday works, why not just keep doing it? You know, I mean, crap, we, we, first half, just keep it tidy, and then second half, hit them on the break. Yeah. And just, we were so I don't mind that. We were so gun ho in the earlier games. Like, yeah, for example, season, the, just the Bournemouth game, 2 0. You got to kill the game. Oh, kill the game. Oh, yeah. Shut up, shut up at 2 0. Yeah. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Exactly. But get and to 2 0. Yeah. Yeah. And, get, um, I think you would have killed the game if we'd have played Bournemouth and got 2 0 up now. I think yeah. that game would be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah. I think, I think we've improved, improved definitely. Yesterday. And if yeah, since like Cooper's match, he actually says that. He said, you know, they put us under a lot of pressure at the end, but we felt comfortable. Yeah. They look comfortable. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we since, did. When yeah. Been, we have... since when has having three midfield means you're defensive? You don't have to be defensive. No, no but we have defensive I said three midfielders the are more defensively minded yeah, definitely. than attacking. Yeah, we've got we've got in there. Oh, the, we've, yes. the ones we've so if, got, you have, yeah. if you have if you have Froyle further up, he's not a defensive. He's not. He's yeah, not. That's, no, that's my point. That's my point. Yeah. Well, I didn't say I didn't say I said three in midfield. I didn't specify where and who. I just said three in midfield <laughs> to give us that to give us that so give us a chance of winning the midfield battle. Yeah, so you can have you can have, you you can have Benilo, Yates and and Freuler, and Freuler could be the furthest forward. It's not defensive. Danilo isn't an out and out midfield scorer I, I i hope everyone's not expecting him to come and get 10 15 goals or even 10 goals he's one of the things he needs to work on is his finishing in the box he's not brilliant at finishing what he will give us is energy well we'll leave it to dino's video you guys yeah, will see that two yeah, goals and one assist in 33 games yeah and that's traveling box to box even though he started at cdm he's traveling box to box a lot mm. okay all right guys it's he's been an 21. interesting debate um tomorrow more importantly we want to hear your views with lemmy and megaphone man in the locker room that's kicking off at half eight is it lemmy yeah half eight we'll be there half we'll, eight. Um, have our say on the past couple of games um uh, we did we talked about the past games last week oh. when we had both uh the fa cup game and then southampton and then tomorrow we'll be talking about uh the league cup and yesterday's game so should be all positive, hopefully. Um, but we we'll welcome anybody on to come on and please talk about what's been happening in Forest for the past couple of games. And uh, anyone else who's, even if you're not even a Forest fan, just tell us what you think. 
what you think the transfer yeah. window and anything. Welcome anyone. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. We've also got the daily transfer news coming tomorrow. We've got a um, in-depth thing on um, Danilo. I forgot his name for a second. And if my render finishes, you may finally get to see the vlog from Leicester if you, if that game's no, even Wolverine. relevant by the time it gets done. Before we, so, is this before we play Leicester next, Wolverine? I hope so. Be ready I, hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Uh, guys, in the chat, I hope you've enjoyed the conversation. I've really enjoyed tonight, and I, I want to do more of this where we're talking to you guys more in the chat, bringing you as if you're part of the panel. So hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you haven't hit the like button, please do so before you leave. We will catch you tomorrow. We have guys in the chat just so you know since the 26th of uh, december when we launched fftv has had at least one live stream and at least one or two videos every single day and we're going to keep trying to keep that pace up so thank you so much for coming in trevor it will be it'll be sometime tomorrow keep an eye on twitter we'll let you know on twitter or in the whatsapp group in the top corner by as his big ass head there uh, but it'll be tomorrow and Dino's going to be doing it so you know it's going to be professional more informative than say me doing it so it's fantastic yeah, true. yeah. <laughs> we'll get we'll you guys tomorrow thank you so much and come on you Reds you